Welcome back, everybody, to Season 2, Episode 101 of the H3 Podcast. Woo! Woo! We are joined here by my lovely and beautifully pregnant wife <laughs> and co-host, Eva Kleiners. Stand up and shout it from the rooftop. Show it off. Show it off. Damn! Halfway yeah. through, huh? More than halfway. More through. than halfway. Yeah. This shit's getting real. <laughs> and of course, we are joined by the luscious, uh, bodacious Vsauce, one of my favorite people here on the show, a wonderful dude, beautiful beard as well. It's you, getting big. Do you use beard oils? I need to start. It's getting a bit dry now after a shower. Uh, and it's just really hard to eat. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever catch some crumbs or flavors in your mouth? And does that disgust you or intrigue you when that I happens? love it, but if others are around, it's embarrassing. Today you love it. today is Jake Roper's birthday. Oh, happy oh, birthday to happy Jake. Birthday and we had a Jake. big cake covered in frosting, and I could not eat it without the tips of my mustache mm. getting covered in frosting. Mm. Little flavor savers. Right. Stick them right in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you ever have a piece of chicken that's perhaps been in your beard for too long? And you're like, well, I did enjoy that. I wonder about this, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Help me out, Michael. You're a smart guy. I don't know where what you're getting at. Except <laughs> if it's are rotting, saying, is the chicken rotting uh, in your beard and then you eat it? Oh, no, no, Six. no. No, it's just kind of getting more flavor. Oh, It's okay. airing out. If, it's getting the sort of beard right. and the skin cell and all that kind fermenting. of... Fermenting. It's fermenting. It's fermenting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I don't eat a lot of chicken, though, to be totally honest. I'm no. more saving crumbs and liquid residues. Right. Okay, yeah. well, those are safe, and those will not spoil, as far as I'm aware. So, no, they help um, preserve the beard. So, I want also. So, first of all, thank you to our sponsors, Ring Honey and MeUndies, and I want to say, Michael, thanks for coming on here to pr mm -hmm. promote your show, season three of Mine Field, season three, and that is <laughs> super exciting. Perhaps the longest running YouTube Red show of all time, and I want to say the most successful. And I don't care about stats or anything to combat that because I think and believe that's true. No one knows the stats. Yeah. <laughs> like Netflix, you know, YouTube Premium, they kind of keep it secretive. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so all I have to go off is like people's reactions. Well, you heard it here. It's the most popular show by far. <laughs> I'm going to quote you on that. By far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By far. So, well, first, before we get into that, because there's a lot I want to ask you about the new season. But before we get into that, I want to ask you, Michael, because you're a man of science. Maybe you can explain to me what the hell is this? Look on the screen. Yeah. The Raiders <laughs> owner, Mark Davis, Deadpool and John Denver. So that part, I, I get it. I see it. So this is Mark Davis. He's the owner of the Raiders football yeah. team. He's worth a court. He's worth half a billion dollars. Yeah. And this is his haircut. <laughs> he looks like Tweedledee from Alice in Wonderland. I find it pretty cool. You like you're, it? If you're worth that much money, <laughs> mm -hmm. look at the confidence <laughs> right. you can have. Right. You know, Mark Davis is not thinking, oops, he's thinking, this isn't a mistake. This is the new yeah. trend. Right. Mark Cuban's going to start doing this. Right. Elon Musk. Well, so that's a great, I like your analysis. Okay, my computers. But here he is without that. And I have to oh, say, he wow. looks a Why, lot, that's the same I have person? to say. That's, is that the same person? I believe so, it, Mark his Davis. His face looks the same. Mark Davis, he's also a pitcher. Wait Famous a minute, pitcher. Yeah. A pitcher. pitcher. But it looks like the same dude. I mean, he, that's the same dude. Look at his face, right? Is the, it? Is, I think the nose isn't as pointy. Hmm. Dan, confirm this. But regardless, this is We're factual. Gone. This is his uh, girlfriend that's the guy. or his right. wife. So he's really <laughs> yeah, that. That's, that that's a different Mark Davis, my dude. Yeah. Oh, but they look so similar. They do. No. I, it fooled me too. But How that can is there a be different two guy. Mark Davises that look so similar. <laughs> There's probably just a lot of Mark Davises. <laughs> but you think that there would be at least a little variance in the way they look? Well, he's committed. He would never cut this beauty. Apparently, he drives 400 miles from. The North Bay to um, Palm Springs to get this haircut. No kidding. He's just, he has a barber. He loves it. <laughs> and he drives there every time he needs a haircut and he rocks it every time. And look but at that's awesome. Cause look, <laughs> if he had yeah. a normal haircut, mm -hmm. we would not be talking about him yeah, right now. That's true. Absolutely not. And as Although... we all know, he is going after the fame. He's a clout, <laughs> he's chasing that clout with this haircut. <laughs> but anyway, so I thought that would be an interesting start. Mark Davis, shout out to you and your uh, <laughs> wonderful cut. I wonder if I could do a bowl cut on my beard, like an upside down bowl cut. Put a bowl around the beard, mm. cut everything that's sticking out, and just have a bowl shaped. You would need it somehow to defy gravity because yeah, I feel like you it would need have it to go up. To have a like lay up. But that would be fantastic. 
I feel like you I could, would do though. it. Well, could you, if you ever do a video about gravity on Vsauce, <laughs> that could potentially be interesting. It could be. I wish my hair was longer and more flowing. Mm. I mean, touch my beard if you want. It's yeah, spongy. It's a thick... Wow. Yeah. Where where are you going with that? Is there a goal? <clears throat> my goal my goal <laughs> is to um what, I want to look like Shell Silverstein. <coughs> Turns out he never had a beard that was quite this big really. For real. Um I rem- I remember him as a bearded gentleman. I know, I but it wasn't quite this person. thick. I mean, that's as formidable that's formidable as it gets. Look oh, him up cuz wow. it's a great look, you know, and I I loved his work as a kid and I still do. Yeah, I do too. You know, now now, here's the other thing I want to do. I'm going to go full mm. mustache and goatee suit. You guys kind of look mm. alike a little bit. I'm going to cut everything here back, have some big sideburns, mm. and then just a huge goatee. By a bike? I don't know if I approve of that. Get exactly. A... I'm pulling the Mark Davis. You're going full <laughs> Mark Davis. You do something where everyone goes, why? Right. And then, yeah. like, the other half of the population goes, I guess I have to look like that too now. Mm. What would be the most extreme thing you could do with your facial hair now? Because I see you with like a with like a soul patch, yeah, and a mustache only. But that's not enough. I think your idea is much more extreme. Yeah, my the idea goatee is pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, with because that's not an in right now either. No. Yeah, that is how you set trends. You yeah. do things that are terrible first. What does your wife think about that? Oh, she hates it. Yeah, <laughs> but I keep telling her, look. <laughs> Everyone who hates it will just go, oh, it must be a joke. Mm-hmm. But those who like it will be like, I like it. Right. So it's a win-win. Yeah. Nobody judges mm-hmm. you. And I'll never mention it. Right. I'll just all of a sudden. Well, you mentioned it. You already mentioned <laughs> it. Uh, and this is live, isn't it? <laughs> the cat that in the back. All right. So there's going to be a, 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 an inner circle right. of, of people who understand what I'm doing. But everyone else will be like, does he know what he looks like? <laughs> right. And I'll just never mention it. I'll be like, yeah, I got a beard. And they're like, no, no, no. But. You 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 have a goatee and yeah. like a mustache, and I'll be like, yeah. You know what's fascinating? I've always looked like this. When I was young, goatee was in. People were all walking around with goatees, and that yeah. was just like normal. Goatees yes. and like remember Starbucks was really new, and like sushi was this new thing mm. in the Midwest. That was around the same time. Like men with ponytails and goatees. Right. That was like <laughs> mm. <clears throat> so cool. Incredible. Today that kind of it kind of goes with a certain like character. The go the mm. someone who rocks a goatee is someone who like <sighs> it's he's a drinker, define. he's a partier, he's a little bit of a hick, I want to say. Until now. Beast <laughs> now, is flipping that all the way I'm upside flipping. down. Everyone goes, "Oh, I thought you were smart." I thought you were curious, but yet you have no goatee. So. What if the goatee becomes the smart man's beard? Maybe I should grow a goatee. No. Yeah. He was out. Yeah. <laughs> he like, come on. This we're talking about Ethan's career. I've here. tried. I've tried so many times to do something interesting with my facial hair when I grow it out. By the way, I cannot grow it to that length because all I end up I with is it. pubes. I have pubes on my is face. Is it not kind of dense it gets enough? oily and it's puby. Do you shower? <laughs> no. Is that part of the problem? That's part of the problem. It no, took I me get... years to figure that yeah. out. Why am I so but oiled? I why, am I, like... why do I smell? <laughs> why is this chicken fermenting in my beard? <laughs> right. Oh, hygiene. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I noticed you have a piece of corn in your pocket. Is that part of the hygiene? <laughs> this is all part of it. Yeah, it keeps the bad spirits away. Right. No, you provided this. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, it is raw corn. It is. And guys, we discovered raw corn. It's so I mean, that, good. You discovered. I already knew this. Raw corn. Yeah. I was, we were posing for a picture because Michael has a raw corn memes. Actually, I have, a, I have here some photos that I can show. It's, it's usually cooked corn in my pictures. But, um, well, we have no way to know that. But this was so sweet and creamy. It absolutely blew my mind. Mm-hmm. I've never had raw corn before. I'm not going to bite into it because I know you guys hate to hear me chew. <laughs> you guys can munch away, but I specifically have a problem. I'm allowed to. I'll limit it. my munching. <laughs> but Michael, what is with the corn gags? Is that a what's what what tell me about the genesis of the corn gags and while you're explaining yourself uh cuz you owe us an explanation. Explain yourself. Nothing yeah. is more funny than a joke <laughs> explained. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. And so um um that was is fun. that you saying you don't want to explain it? Because <laughs> I will accept that. Uh I feel like I'll, it'll ruin the magic. You know, okay. so much of it is Wait, is there a deeper meaning here? Right. Here's a collage just to set the tone. <laughs> but there's this and so, so much more. Um, corn magic. I loved this picture in the upper left. Uh, that's, um, <laughs> that's the shooting of, of your yeah, show, we, right? Yeah, we shot 
uh, in my hometown on the on the football field. We built a neural network out of people. Mm -hmm. And one of the participants, his mom was like just across the street and she brought a bunch of corn for me. Mm. And it was raw corn. Because she was aware of the meme. Well, was he was, and he, he, was. he like texted, Mom, oh, bring corn. corn. She's like, I love you, I'll do whatever you say. Right. And then, <laughs> boom, we corned out together, and... That's awesome. Memories were made. Well, I, you have uh, so many corn posts. Let me find my favorite one, if I can, if I can choose. Um, it's so hard to decide, but my favorite one, if I hop on over your Instagram, has got to be... And I know this makes for entertaining uh, <laughs> searching content, through Instagram pics. I thought it was near the top, but now I'm losing um, I'm losing hope. That's my least favorite. That one there with this the one? veiny corn. That was taken it's at the smokehouse in LA. It's a hairy corn. Oh, why is that your least favorite? I think that one is, is it's not quite blurry. Good. It doesn't have the same okay. action. You need blurry corn action. Well, I'm looking like an idiot and I'm not finding I it. think you're out you're already. already. Like, literally, the first yeah. corn pick, you've already passed. It's right. that you one on the left here. right there. All right. Okay. We're coming back season two very strong. <laughs> <laughs> what? Right, let's move I mean, on past what, what sort of features are you remembering? It was a close-up, and it, uh, maybe it was this one. <laughs> I think it was this one. This is my favorite corn pick. Yeah. Because there's, <laughs> it's so blurry. There's so much motion going on. Really, almost you can't even make out the face. Let alone yeah. the corn. And the eye is really distorted and big. Yeah. But yet everyone knew. Yeah. You what still you... see that and you know what it is. Mm. Corn. Fascinating. Why wasn't there an episode about this in your new season? <laughs> well, the problem is, if I say too much, it loses its mystique. Mm. Right? Um, it all began with my father. If I can get deep here for a second. He would like just say weird stuff out of nowhere sometimes. Like he'd be in the bathroom and you just hear like, Corn Dog Willie was a friend of mine. Hmm. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe that's a real song. I don't think it is. I don't think I've I don't heard know who Corn, Corn Dog, Dog Willie. Willie is. Yeah. But it kind of became a earworm for hmm. me. Like still, it gets stuck in my head like corn dogs. And, and so then my wife and I got a cat and I was like, let's call it Corn. That'd hmm. be funny. And she like was into it. Hmm. So we have a cat named Corn. And. Then I just, ex I started to be consumed by the corn, and now I can't stop. Do you really like I corn? Corn stop. <laughs> that was good, a stretch, but I got, I'm on the page. I I've tweeted that pun before, so I don't think I'm like stop. clever. <laughs> yeah, um, that's one you've thought of and can. Let me let me also clarify. I I'm a, it, corn the vegetable. I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. I really support it. But is this really the kind of corn <clears throat> I'm talking about? Oh. Because corn is also my cat. I feel like I'm in a Vsauce video corn. right now. <laughs> is also a word for small things, like corned beef. Right. Oh. The corn refers to, I believe, the, the salt. Like, mm. the you've put the it in. The corning process. The corning process. Mm. And also um, a, a band as well. And that's with the K. Yeah. That is completely different. Okay. I have, <laughs> I'm, I'm not associated with You're not. promoting. I thought you were endorsing corn. Corn with a band. C. Okay, with the K is the band. That you were endorsing totally them. Thing. You were endorsing the band Corn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the band Corn with the C. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but you know what? To be look, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go go into this. Like, I think it's time to move on. I think uh -oh. that the corn thing, mm. I don't want it to become oversaturated. Mm. It's time to move on. We're hanging up the corn right now. I'm not hanging it up right now. You can't just hang up something that's taken over your soul. <laughs> what you can do is evolve. Right. So I think a few days ago I tweeted cat burp. Huh. What was that about? Interesting. There was no corn there, was there? Uh. I do have a cat named Corn. You see how it there evolved. A, right. Uh -huh. But I don't know where this is gonna take me. I, I cannot really explain How did that tweet topic. perform? Do you look at performance and does that does yeah. that fuel kind of your intrigue? Like the corn thing, people were kind of responding to it probably, right? And that's what fueled your curiosity? I wasn't surprised as I was responding to it. Mm. If I share my <laughs> passions, the likes will come. It's the genuineness. Mm -hmm. It's the, yeah. People respond to the genuineness. So how did Cat Burp respond for you? Oh, really well. Interesting. You know, I, and it's always this weird mental thing where, like, I've been making a lot of videos this year. Right. And they get a certain amount of attention, but then I tweet Cat Burp and it gets <laughs> ten times more interactions. Of course, sure. Of course. And I'm like, well. It's always like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
It's real. I'm like, hey, everyone, support Alzheimer's research and blah, blah, blah. Go <laughs> oh, to this okay, link. Right. And like five people are like, Ugh, hate you. <laughs> yeah. But then I tweet cat burp and everyone's like, oh, mm. I'm going to die someday. It becomes this mm. deep, meaningful thing and they love it. And I'm glad for that. Mm. Is cat burping a thing? Do cats burp? I can't find a definitive answer. Okay, interesting. All right, it's not in some of the major veterinarian textbooks. Huh. You've seen Shredder burp, right? Have you? I don't know. Or if is it like a burp. cough, like a? I think he actually burped. I don't think he's burped. Well, what do they do? Well, we're talking about a dog. <laughs> yeah, they have different digestive yeah. systems, and their diets are maybe more similar. <clears throat> mm. But like. They must have the ability to burp. I think it can happen. Hmm. But everything I found was if your cat is legitimately burping, that's weird. It need, Something's that wrong. That needs medical attention. <laughs> right. A human burping is just a normal part of how we work. Digest. I'm not a doctor. Definitely not a cat doctor. Okay. You're Do cats error. burp? I got a feeling we got a new Vsauce video coming soon. You got uh, <laughs> sophisticated memes. Yeah, that's on. true. It's the only kind. <coughs> Every meme just... is sophisticated, but sometimes we're afraid to acknowledge that. And we treat it like it's, you know, just, oh, it's just deep fried. I just, blah, blah. No. It is the beginning and end of humanity. Mm. <laughs> right. That's, that's great. I mean, I just post pictures of me being fat. But do but you? you've gone deep. Is that really all it is? Well, I think so. It is shattering the norms. I mean, mm. no one I have ever followed on social media did that. That's true. Confidence in an image. Oh. Burping is quite rare in cats. Dan has done some research here. He says, while common in humans, thank you for that, burping, (laughs) it's like, oh. (laughs) Oh, my God. I feel so much better. (laughs) Um, While common in humans, burping is quite rare in cats. In fact, according to Dr. Anna Hosen has, yeah, right, not real doctor, a staff doctor at New York City Animal Medical Center who specializes in small animal internal medicine. And okay, come on. It's uncommon that it even appears in two major veterinary texts she regularly consults. I swear I've heard my cat burp, but the lack of information out there indicates that if cats do burp, it's very important to their overall health. Yeah. It's that's, not very important to their overall that, health. That's the same resource I was reading the other day. And, that's and not because much. Because it was so mysterious, <laughs> I had to tweet it. Hmm, so you see, the cat burp didn't come from me going, what's going to be weird? It There's came from something me. Something deeper. Being like, do they burp or not? I can't believe I can't find out. <laughs> Time to just tweet it out there. Get the conversation started. Hmm. Let's get social, in other words. <laughs> Let's break the internet. Let's get social, Let guys. Let the conversation begin. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Um, I am vegan. Mm-hmm. How, for three days. For three days you've been vegan. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. For three days. Today's the third day. I'm tired. I'm confused. I'm disoriented. I'm scared. Are you doing it right? I mean, no. you're not just eating, like, French fries and... <coughs> oh, no, I haven't had anything right? unhealthy yet. Yeah, avocado sandwiches. Yeah, no, I'm vegan. I'm all out. And I'm doing it for health reasons, and it's been three days and I'm still fat, so I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong. Three days? <laughs> Look, you can be really fat and vegan. I mean, I think you can it, consume a lot of calories. I think it takes plant. extra work to be <laughs> super fat and vegan, because you basically just have to eat, like, tons of bread basically for and you, French fries. Whoa, 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 whoa. pizza no. and burger. I mean, the dairy, I'm already noticing in these three days, the cream, the cheese, the dairy, that shit, I eat so much of that shit. Right. It's mm-hmm. insane, and that shit is just, like, poison. So, do you feel better for not having that for three days? I feel tired. Interesting. Now, look, this whole— But I always feel tired. This whole bread and potatoes thing, that that can trip you up, but you're in the right city to eat well vegan. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys right. know the Cafe Gratitudes, the— right. The um, but now I can only name one. Crossroads. All the other ones. Yeah. All the, all the other yeah. ones. I don't know any of those um, places, but I'll uh, take a look. Gracias list. Madre. Yeah. Jeez. No, actually oh, I work places. with a whole bunch of vegans. So the the Vsauce office Ooh. is primarily vegan. Oh, for real? Stuff. This office too, kind of. They're not vegan. By the way, meat is murder. I become fully conscious. By the way, I went for the diet and spent <laughs> three days, and I saw like Ela eating like a a sandwich, and I was like, "Excuse me, Ela, what was on the sandwich?" I said, "Excuse me, it had I don't know some kind of animal product." <laughs> I said, "Excuse me, Ela, meat is murder." Wow. I, don't you have a conscious? Do you know that the conditions that animals suffer in to produce animal products? There's a holocaust going on every day in this country. Billions of chickens and cows being murdered every day. Meat is murder. I'm a vegan for three days. How do you... <laughs> how how do you sleep at night? Yeah. 
That animal not may good. have had plans for the future, ambitions Excuse and dreams. Excuse me, but I not was good. vegetarian. I shake her awake every 20 minutes. I was vegetarian, and Ethan was the one who, because of him, I stopped. What I'm so. hearing is excuses. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, she's eating for two. Right. Okay? The health of the baby What's is fair about important. that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I want her to eat meat. With the, we got a little baby inside of her. You don't have to eat meat when you're pregnant, but, you know, you shouldn't, like, eat the wrong things or skip things. Yeah. Right. You should worry about the baby. I heard about people, vegans, who force their, like, animals to be vegan. And obviously, like, dogs are carni- carniv- carnivores. They eat meat. <laughs> and so they were, like, killing their dogs and malnourishing their dogs from giving them a vegan diet. We should fact check this because I've heard Dan, fact that, check that dogs can eat vegan diets. I, I but think cats dogs can't. can kind of get away with it. Cats definitely can't. Cats like, cannot. Fuck you. And oh. I, really? I've heard of people doing that to their cats, and that, that's unacceptable. I've heard of people like doing starving. that to their newborn babies, and they just fucking, like, kill their babies. <laughs> that seems kind Talk of to too. a doctor, yeah. please. Yeah. I'm vegan, so... Um, <laughs> By the way, there's an ongoing debate. I always hear people asking, is semen vegan? I think it would certainly be vegan. I it mean, is, and the, here's why. Right. The, I've researched this, Michael. done a lot of research. I know you know a lot, you don't need let to, me in here. You don't really need to research this. <laughs> well, you can just think about it. I've done a lot of extensive research <laughs> on and off the field, <laughs> okay. in, and, in and out of the lab. Yeah. Now, semen is vegan because a human can consent to give you their it's animal product. Animals cannot consent, and so if well, you were wondering, Ela, yes, semen is vegan. I was vegan. not wondering. <laughs> <laughs> is it <laughs> now? I've heard it's not always um, that consent is required because, for instance, an animal's placenta might be okay for a vegan because it's abandoned by the animal. It's abandoned, mm. so you can eat their shit. <laughs> you could definitely. Yeah, that that would be vegan. <laughs> there might be, however, the question is: there might be, you know, if they're a carnivorous animal who has outputted the feces, there might be some meat byproducts but you, in the you feces. didn't make any choice, in, because the animal was existing in its natural habitat. Well, Animals right. don't need permission, and but the shit is waste, so I would say if you're vegan, you can happily feast on an animal's poop. And good I, Give me the clear on that, man. Yeah, I don't, man, you're not I don't a vegan. think you're, you're not on my level. way of the animal's well-being or any of its right. rights by eating its poop. So, according to this council, we all agree that you can feast on poop as a vegan. Feast. But can you, can, hold on, hold on, if I cooked poop Mm -hmm. to the right temperature, would it be safe to eat? That is something for you to, to, um, explore in your next Vsauce video. Guess what? (laughs) I already have explored it. As it turns out, yeah. Oh, really? You can cook, I mean, if you cook it to a temperature that kills all living organisms, then... You know, you could eat it, hmm. but you don't even need to cook poop to eat it and be fine if it's your own poop. Really? For real? Apparently, eating your own poop you can... is not that bad. What? Other people's poop, don't do it. Huh. <laughs> You're just putting the same, you know, microbes that are already in yourself. That sounds now, like uh, somewhat I uh, should sketchy. probably walk this back a bit and explain <laughs> that I'm not a doctor. Okay, right. And I'm sure everyone's going to go, uh, Actually, uh, Michael, <laughs> I just ate my own poop, and I'm tweeting this from the hospital. And so, don't eat your own poop. But if you have to eat poop, make sure go with own. your own and microwave it first if you can. Uh, I'd say like pan fry with a little, you know, some shallots and. Have you tried that? A little cream sauce. <laughs> I've never tried it. <laughs> Hold on. Now I do think that would be intriguing to cook your own poop and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> It just, it just hit me what we've been talking about. Oh, man. But it is such a good question. It really gets well, to the heart of, like, why can we eat some things and not others? What is poop? Mm-hmm. What is hygiene? Um, well, are we know, going too far with our hygiene? Well, I was watching a really fascinating documentary about, you've probably heard about this, poop transfusions. Yeah. There's really uh, diseases of the, of, like, ass bacteria or like colon, uh, you know, colon, uh, test, in, in, intestinal bacteria and people with healthy, good gut bacteria and intestinal bacteria, they suck all the shit out of the asshole of the unhealthy person. <laughs> it's, it's, it, you can really? also call it a fecal donation. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want to be, uh, they shit in another dude's assholes, really. No. If you want to get down <laughs> to don't. brass tacks. No, but they take all the ass out. <laughs> 
and then they like <laughs> pump all the ass in of a healthy person, and it heals it's, these really what? rare. Yeah. It completely heals them. It's like a miracle treatment. It's fascinating. Yeah, right, Michael. It's, it's fascinating, and it really has improved a lot of people's lives. A poop, a poop transplant. Yeah, the poop. They poop. They shit uh-huh. in another dude's asshole. No, they. That's not how they do it. <laughs> they go and ask the ass. All, there are also synthetic uh, poops. That can, that can be put into your body if you need right. that infusion of, of good bacteria. Huh. It doesn't have to be another person's. There was even an artist who, like, a decade ago created a machine that you would put, like, a hamburger in. And it had all the right <clears throat> mechanisms and all the right oh. chemicals. Mm. And it would oh turn God. food into <laughs> robot-made artificial poop. Oh Interesting. Could you eat it? <laughs> if you cooked it first. <laughs> and it could eat its own poop, and that'd be really This is like a bit. This is like a who's on first bet. Can you poop? Can you eat the poop? Only if you cook it. But if it's your own, you can eat it. <laughs> that's, that's the point of every story we're going to tell yeah. today. Uh, welcome back to season two. Nothing's changed. It's the same season as it ever was. Do you guys edit these down? No. Or? This is live. I know it's live, but do you then put out nope. like, oh, you put out the whole thing. <laughs> There's no way not to because on YouTube, it'll be it's It'll live. be out anyway. Yeah. When we were on Twitch oh. live, oh. we had an opportunity to edit. So now when you stop uh, putting this out, when you mm-hmm. stop, what, what's the word? Yeah. Broadcasting. Broadcast. Streaming. Yeah. Then it's just saved and that's the that's episode it. that's up on your exactly. channel. Yeah. Right, right. It's like a tweet. It cannot be edited. It is history. And it will forever be encapsulated for all eternity, like a healthy poop in the intestines of a healthy person. But it can be transferred into another intestines for a healthy poop. That's, That's awesome. what happens when you watch it. Mm-hmm. Does that make deep, sense? Man. That's deep. All right. Wow. We blasted through that first 30 <laughs> seconds quick. 30 minutes? Minute? <laughs> that 30 seconds went by. <laughs> Long last. Second. Man, I'm so delirious. <laughs> uh, um, so, guys, we're going to throw it over to a quick break. Do not go away because we have a lot more to uncover, a lot more to discover, a lot more to learn and to grow together on this journey of feasting on poop. So we will see you soon and do not go anywhere. Ta-ta. Not a ta-ta. <laughs> Ring's mission is to make your neighborhood safer. You might already know about their smart video doorbells and cameras that protect millions of people everywhere, but Ring helps you stay connected to your home anywhere in the world. So there, if there's a package delivered or a surprise visitor, you'll get an alert and be able to see, hear, and speak to them all from your phone. That's thanks to the HD video and two-way audio feature of Ring devices. Now, let me tell you something. Me and Ela, we don't live in the best neighborhood. It's not the worst neighborhood. It's not that bad, but I mean, like, it's a little shady Mm -hmm. sometimes at night. And I would not feel safe at home if we did not have these rings. I'm telling you. Six of them. They are life changing. Now, you can get started right with the doorbell, okay? So if anyone approaches the door, you get a notification, a motion notification on your phone. You can talk to them. It saves and uploads it to the cloud. Nobody's getting away with anything when you've got rings. But we've got them on the sides of our house, on our driveways. You cannot approach our house. Without us knowing. And the video quality is the best one. And you can talk to them. Yeah. You say, hey, I can see you, buddy. And then, you know, then they they can talk back to you. I mean, this is space age technology. Next year is 2020. The future is now. It came a year early. That's what Ring is. You got to try it. If you're at all curious. Now, as a listener, you also get a special offer on a Ring Starter Kit available right now. With a video doorbell and motion-activated floodlight cam, we have four of those. I freaking love those. The Starter Kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. So, go to ring.com slash h3. That's ring.com slash h3 to arrive in the future. 2020, one year early. Ring.com slash h3. Here, guys, how about some free money? That's basically what Honey is. It's a free check in your pocket. Millions of top-rated sellers offer the exact same product on Amazon. Finding the best deals feels like looking for an invisible needle in the best in the world's biggest haystack. But thanks to Honey, the free browser extension, I always get the best price on Amazon without lifting a finger. Honey automatically goes to work whenever I shop on Amazon. It compares the prices of every seller that carries the item I want. Honey even factors in shipping, sales tax, and Amazon Prime status to make sure I'm getting the lowest price possible. It shows me the best deal every time, even if Amazon doesn't. It's like having my very own personal shopping assistant. Honestly, Honey is so easy to use, it feels like cheating. It feels like you're robbing a bank at gunpoint. No, that's no. it doesn't feel like that. But it's legal, so it can feel like that. But it's not. It's just a smart, automated deal finder that gets millions of shoppers the best price on Amazon and all across the Internet. 
Now, let me tell you, show you guys an example. I was doing a little shopping at Coach. I got myself some shoes and a new wallet for Christmas. <laughs> and it was $400. Don't judge me. And um, just out of nowhere, Honey swoops in with $25 off. Holiday 25. I didn't know about this. Yeah. Boom. Look at this. 25 off. That's what it does for you on Amazon and almost all major retailers across the internet. It's free to install. It just takes a matter of seconds. More than 10 million people are using Honey to save money, and they've got over 100,000 five-star reviews on Google Chrome Store. Time Magazine, forget what Time Magazine says. Listen to me. It's <laughs> free money. We both said the same thing. I said it first. So next time you're shopping on Amazon or anywhere around the web, don't wonder whether you found the best deal. Just add Honey to get the best price automatically. So add Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash h3. That's joinhoney.com slash h3. Takes a couple clicks. Bam, bam, bam. You're set for life, boy. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and rather than spending all that money going out to fancy restaurants, why not just hang around in your underwear all night, courtesy of MeUndies? MeUndies uses the coveted micromodal fabric, which is three times softer than cotton. This fabric genuinely feels like actual heaven against your skin. And boy, is that soft, right, Ela? Very soft. Speaking of prints, this V-Day season, MeUndies will be releasing a new print every Tuesday. That means that you and your loved ones could chill in matching prints for V-Day and play the game of how long can you keep these on? And if you're by yourself, how long can you keep it in? Speaking of micromodal, look at these beautiful Valentine's Day socks. They're so soft, breathable, and luxurious. If you're a couple, you can put them on and hang out and just your socks together. And if you're by yourself, you can jerk off into it. What if you're by yourself? They really laying. Why would you buy yourself Valentine's Day underwear? That's kind of the saddest shit I ever heard. <laughs> That's a lot of people, you think. <laughs> Buying themselves Valentine's Day underwear? Oh, buy no. Yeah. <laughs> That's not I want to jerk of people. off and feel special tonight, baby. <laughs> Lighting candles for yourself. That me, uh, yes, yes, yes. But why stop at Undies? This year's Me Undies is launching their V Day prints in lounge pants and onesies as well. Both are made from the same micromodal fabric that is coveted around the world. Me Undies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first time purchase, when you order Me Undies, you get 15% off and free shipping. That's a no brainer. Get 15% off a pair of the most comfortable underwear you will ever put on. So, to get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash H3. That's MeUndies.com slash H3. Welcome back, everybody. I hope your buttholes are well kept and clumped and clean and dried. <laughs> Back here with the wonderfully... It's not a very family-friendly show. It I should try to be. be. I, I don't try know why. To be. But what? I just said poop? Oh. <laughs> you said the M. A word. Ask? Stop it. Oh, the A word? Yeah. I was like, damn. What's so... If... <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I heard, Michael, that, first of all, happy birthday. Your birthday was on Wednesday. Am I right? That's right. January you, 23rd. You're the same age as me, 33 years old. Is that the best <laughs> applause sound effect you guys can get? I think it's fine. It sounds like rain. It's not a sound effect. It does We're sound really like clapping rain. back here. <laughs> We're really clapping. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, um, you're 33 years old, same age as me. Have you noticed the effects of aging? Because I'm starting to notice, like, some things. But tell me, what's your experience about being an a old 33-year-old? I mean, like, like <clears throat> physically... <laughs> Yeah. Especially with this big beard, there's like a lot of gray in it, mm. right? And I had always had a not few a gray hairs. There's not a lot. But I think mentally it's really interesting because, I don't know, you're kind of reaching this point where the the things I I'm, was nostalgic for, like mm. Rugrats and Doug mm -hmm. and Salute Your Shorts, mm -hmm. and that always set me apart from lame adults. Mm. But now it defines me as a lame adult mm. because the young people now are like, Oh my gosh! Um, what's a, what's a show that's like way not old now? Um, like Carly, I Carly. There's all these Disney shows people know <laughs> that like I Drake don't know. and Josh. Yeah, Jake and it's and they're, and, and they're like that. Oh my gosh, that was so long ago. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. What about David the Gnome? Remember that? Yeah, I and they're do. all like, um, <laughs> no. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like when my parents would say, you know, yeah. Yeah. howdy doody, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, oh wow, <laughs> you just die already, you know? <laughs> right. So you realize that. Oh my gosh, like I'm yeah. just becoming right. an adult. Like this now I'm, it, my, me and my peers are like running the world. 
Mm-hmm. There, there is no one above us who's right. like, they know what's going on. Mm-hmm. They're in charge. Now it's like, we are. And it's huge. Mm. And we're lame. <laughs> we're lame? Or not. I don't think Do you, you feel said like. That. I didn't make a judgment about it. Yeah, I don't think a world. judgment was passed. I don't think it's I think it's too early <laughs> to say much about millennials. <laughs> no, I no, I genesis. mean like <laughs> as you're feeling about yourself. Like we're those lame adults. We're some adults are cool. All right. I don't wanna look, I don't wanna g- get my adult sponsorship canceled. Right. I support adults. <laughs> uh, but um like watching history documentaries. And you realize that all these people that are like have been such a big part of where we are today, and they're all like our age when they were doing these mm-hmm. things. And you're like, I'm <laughs> in that phase. I had that similar mm-hmm. epiphany where I was like, almost everyone around me now <clears throat> is younger than me. Right. I'm the old guy now. Right. And I'm not interacting. Like, I'm so used to being the young guy. Right. Where I, everyone is older than me around me. And so it's coming to the point where we're going to be the old dude. Right. And lame. That's what I was trying to yeah, say. Yeah, okay, well, uh, I'm trying to, we're trying to be a little more optimistic here. Eli. Why don't you microwave some poop and eat it? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you obsessed with the microwave? I'm telling you. Oh, I Pan, sear, roast if you must. Look, if you're going to cook poop and eat it, you might as well microwave it. I that mean, seems soothing. Why, it, it already comes out quite warm, 98.6. Like, well, apparently it's not enough warm. Iced poop. Could you get it cold enough that all the organisms inside die? Flash freeze, like sushi. Yeah. <laughs> like Probably. astronaut ice cream, but poop. We can't. Okay, we're trying to get off this. We're going to get off this. Yeah. So the point if is... If you blast poop into space and somehow propel it back in to atmosphere, can you eat it then? I just don't know if I want it to be exposed to cosmic rays and the radiation that's For out For real? You think that would be a danger? It could mutate the bacteria into mm. like super poop bacteria and now Sounds it's back bomb. in the body. Sounds like a delicacy. I thought we were moving on from this. <laughs> we are. Okay. Look. Well, where were we? <laughs> Another thing, <laughs> sorry, another thing is the, I, I compare things a lot. Like when I was a child, music from the 50s was like oldies. Right. And it's still called oldies. Mm-hmm. But in the 80s, music from the 50s was 30 years old. Mm-hmm. Now, music from the 80s, the 80s is 30 years old. Right. So to children born now, <laughs> music from the 80s is like what Elvis was to me as a kid. Right. And it felt like Elvis was mm. from this different world. Yeah. It was so far in the past. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It's a little strange. Now, what about like frequent urinating? That was kind of more what I was asking you about. <laughs> I, I'm i urinating the same amount, <laughs> really? which is actually a lot. I really love urinating. You like it? <laughs> you I find love it, it? so annoying. <laughs> I'm like urinating so much more than I used to. I don't already. mind having to go and then going and then feeling relief. What about in the like, middle of the night? Middle of that, it's fun. What? <laughs> Here's why I what like it. What is fun about You that? should be pregnant. Because you can't. Because you really, really enjoy it. I don't it. think I should be. <laughs> <clears throat> but I might be. Um, I don't think, so I like waking up in the middle of the night. You're all alone. And, you know, I, there's a couple of app games I play. You got chests to open up. Really? You, you know? open up your phone at, when you. Yeah. And I'm like, while I'm peeing, I'm you like, take a oh detour. my God. I take a it's detour. It's like a special little And then moment. I go to bed and I feel like I've like, accomplished a few things. <laughs> so I deserve to sleep again. I try to keep even my eyes closed while I. While, yeah. Oh, well, wow. because a lot of because people. Because I don't want to wake up. And c- once I wake <laughs> up, it's so hard for me right. to go back to sleep. I can go right sleep. back to bed if it's li- the middle of the night. And mm. you can fuck around on your mobile game and then just be like, okay, I'm done. I'm not, like, <laughs> focusing. I'm just like, oh, I need to open that chest and start unlocking that one. What the game p- are you playing? <laughs> You're embarrassed to say. What is it? <laughs> well, I mean, I think they should sponsor me before I start talking about it. I don't it. get paid without But Well, I mean, what kind of game? I'm, I'm curious. It's a, golf, <laughs> it's a golf game called Golf Clash by Playdemic. <laughs> is that the guys who make Clash of Clan or people just use no Clash? No idea. I literally don't know. <laughs> It could be that they're the same company. It could be that Clash is just like just it gives you word. a lot of downloads. Yeah. yeah, I think it does. I don't know. Clash of golf, Michael? Do you play golf? <laughs> I've never played golf. I but went you... to a driving range one time. How'd you do? I don't even remember. I was like Probably seven. Good, yeah. Oh, seven. Yeah. <laughs> but but golf on an app. Yeah. You've got the ball guide. You can be a lot more you know mathematical about it. Sure. It's not so much like getting into physical shape. It's about mm-hmm. mental shape. Physical shape is so important, though. Your brain is part of your physical body. You need to stay in shape. <coughs> but right. mm-hmm. but when you play real golf, you don't unlock 
a platinum chest because you won a tour game. No, absolutely not. And what would you find in those chests that would be so uh, valuable to you? Oh, jeez. Like, I'd really like to finally unlock Cataclysm, right? What is that? <laughs> Only the best wood in the game when it's at a high uh, enough level? Oh, so you unlock clubs. Like Are you guys also clubs. not obsessed with this game? I don't even know no. this game. <laughs> I've been playing Balloons TD6, which is one Go of these- on. Oh, that's the shit right there. It's a- I have to- I have a little bit of a bone to pick with this game, to be frank with you. It's a tower defense game. Dan, you've played the number six? You, uh, you know what? I don't know if I've played six. Uh, I am familiar with the, the Balloons. Series. The, the series. It's a tower it's an epic defense series. game. Yeah. yeah, me too. I love it. I've been in love with them since Brood War, Starcraft, yeah. back in the day. We're the same age. Isn't that great? When's your birthday? June 20-something. So you're like six months June older. June 24th. <clears throat> um, I have some water. <laughs> regardless, we've been talking a mile a minute. I mean, there's so much to cover. Regardless, there's this game you defend balloons as monkeys with darts, okay? It's great. It's a great game. But here's in my, where I get really frustrated. You have to buy the game. I think I paid $5 for the game. Oh, you have to buy it just to play. Just for the game. Uh -huh. And so you expect, well, I'm buying the game, so I'm going to get a whole game, a wholesome game. And But what you end up getting is you have to still buy a bunch of, like, bullshit to enjoy the game. Do you have to? Well, you're at a, such a disadvantage that it's all, it's di unsatisfying to play. Hmm. And I'm like, dude, I uh, what the hell? Like, this game should be free, at least, yeah. if you're going to, you That's know, fuck me I around. That's why I think <clears throat> Golf Clash really hit that Dan, can you go spot. back and bleep the F-bomb? Oh, it doesn't uh, no. work like that. <laughs> doesn't work like that? Sorry. It's live. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, Golf Clash is a game where you can definitely pay to get special balls mm -hmm. and extra cards. All those woods. Clubs. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, you don't have to. I haven't spent a single dime. I don't mind if people do. Sure. But I kind of like the challenge of can I, just through what you get without paying, mm -hmm. be competitive? And it means I've had to be better. Mm. I've had to study more. Mm. I've got to have all the spreadsheets and the notes. I got to really like plan out. Do you really have spreadsheets and notes? Or are yeah. you being I could show you my notes that are in my bag. I got to have them with me in case I get like a free minute and I'm like, ooh, time to complete the tour. Opening rounds are going to end soon. You're being theatrical. Am I? <laughs> yes. Because they're not selling. Well, anyway, Michael, I appreciate <clears throat> the anecdote. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Who's not selling? <laughs> I don't. And, I don't believe a golf game is gonna be that complicated. They're trying to sell to mo. I mean, there's kids playing golf games. You don't have to crunch numbers. You're not doing Pythagorean theorem and crunching MC equals MC We're squared. We're talking you just about just push the button and then probably time it with a ring. Um, there is some timing. There's also top spin, side spin, mm -hmm. curl, wind adjustments. How, yeah. Joe, should I do the rough bump here? Or do I have enough backspin to just <laughs> yeah. go right to the green? Yeah. That's something that you have to learn this, through me, experience. Me, meanwhile, this is what the game looks like. <laughs> It looks a lot like this. <laughs> because you always play against a real opponent. Oh, that's cool. So you're spending half the time watching them play. <laughs> right. And then you're like, oh, it's my turn. And there we go. Oh, that's fun. Okay, cool. Now, you try. <laughs> I will say one of my favorite games of all time was a golf game. It was Tiger Woods Golf. And it's so cool because you can upgrade your guy. <clears throat> you get the yeah. clubs, like you said. You get, you're all over the place. You're hitting, you're hitting drives that real people would only dream of driving that far. And you're feeling right. the rush. Mario Golf on Game Boy Color was my favorite game. Mm. And so, you know, a few months ago, I was like, there's got to be another golf game out there that's good. Mm. Downloaded a bunch. Didn't you say and Mario Kart? Mario Golf. Oh, Mario Golf. Yeah. Okay. On Game Boy Color. I played that okay. version. And I loved it. Mm. Um, and I also, I, I, I get really into the whole, like, ooh, if I play a little bit more, I'll, I'll have a few more rewards, mm -hmm. you know, and they get you on that mm -hmm. kind of like I'm making progress. Mm -hmm. and, but you can see the results of it like, ooh, ooh, I know how to play this shootout. Mm -hmm. I know that you, what you, you have to curl a bit more than you might think. And really the mm -hmm. way to go is through the left. Don't go straight at the hole. That looks mm -hmm. easier. But watch this. And then your opponent's like, Whoa! and you're like, can you talk shit to the other person? Mm -hmm. you, you can only use the preset yeah, emojis they provide. That. But people find a way to still be mean with them. They, and it re <laughs> the people always find a way to really aggravate each other with those. Yeah. So, Like when you fuck up and they say, like, good game, good game, good game, good game, or something like that. Well, good nice, yeah. shot, nice shot, <clears throat> nice shot, sarcastically. Nice shot, well played, you're good. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I just fell in the bunker, you're being mean. Uh, yeah. 
Or they'll, they'll spam emojis when you're trying to line up a shot when it really matters. You're running oh. out of time. Um, <laughs> I love it. So then I'm the opposite. I'm terrified that people will take what I'm saying the wrong way. Mm. So I only say good game if I've lost. Interesting. If I win, sometimes I feel like they might interpret it as I'm gloating. Right. So I'll say something like, good luck. But even that kind of sounds good like luck. I'm telling them they need it's luck a little because weird. they're bad. Yeah, good luck, idiot. So what do you do? <sighs> you're a sweet tough. guy, man. So you got to go luck. hard of gold. I don't want anyone to like discover my account <laughs> or accounts epic on Golf Clash and then be talker. like, this guy's, Michael's a jerk. Because <laughs> right. people love those stories right. of like, who's actually really Wouldn't rude? that be great if there was an expose on Michael from his golf <laughs> shit talking? Yeah. Now, Michael, <laughs> season three has just come out. Yeah. All, eight, all the episodes. All eight episodes are up, available to view. YouTube Red, they don't call it YouTube Red anymore. They call it YouTube Premium. YouTube what the hell is that? What happened? They just love rebranding things because it's <laughs> confusing. Right. They want to be confusing as possible. It's apparently that a good strategy. Their... Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, YouTube Premium is what it's called now. I just focus on its minefield, right? <laughs> right. And who knows what will happen in the in the far future, but it's been, a, it's been an awesome ride. And season three <laughs> is my favorite season because... As I've become more confident, like working with mm. a larger team with like, you know, deadlines and a bigger budget and a lot more on the line, I've gotten better. And I've also mm. gotten more confident in kind of being a big part of the process. Mm. And the team this year really understood what made Minefield great. So we've got an expert from a university or a research team in everything. They're mm. always there. So you don't just feel like it's, you know, this unqualified guy, Michael, being like a, is this a reality show? You feel like, oh, I can see how pilot studies are made, mm. how you develop an experiment and how you kind of try out variables to make sure that you're ready when you actually start. Mm. So, mm. Well, <laughs> there was two episodes that stood out to me. The first one was the chimpanzee one. That yeah. was like freaking phenomenal. That it's was amazing. such, yeah. dude, you guys, this one's free. So like this episode was so amazing. You went out to China, Japan or okay. uh, Japan. Yeah. <laughs> All this thing. Whoa. Ethan, <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, you went out to Japan and um, you hooked up with this research researcher yeah. who studies chimpanzees. And there's this huge natural habitat. Yeah. Where they the chimpanzees come in on their own. Exactly. Yeah, that so cool. is crazy. So right. it's like this huge open kind of Enca uh, encampment. Yeah, yeah. So I went knowing that other people had <laughs> talked about his research. Obviously, it's been published for, you know, more than a decade. But I didn't know as much about how he runs the experiment. It's not like, all right, you know, get the tasers out and wrangle the chimps into the, the rooms. They've got these treetop laboratories. So to the chimp, it feels like they're just foraging. And instead of reaching out and grabbing a berry and eating it, they reach out and they touch numerals in order, and then they get the same type of food they would normally forage, same amount. Mm -hmm. And then that's all calculated so that they're, they're, the meals that they're given by the, the keepers all add up to the, the right amount of food in a day. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> so they get their whole day's food from these experiments? No, they don't. Oh. They, they don't even have to go and do the experiment if they don't want to. Right. If they don't, then they'll just be fed a little bit more later. Right. Mm. Um, but there's even facial recognition cameras that, that can tell which chimpanzee has walked in. Wow. So they know what difficulty to give. Oh, they know wow. who's eating the food. Huh. Wow. So they don't get overfed. Right. And um, it's just wonderful. Now, that also made it hard to film because the, you can't just be like, all right, bring in the chimps. They're like, we have to wait and we don't know who's going to come. It could be one of the geniuses that's going to be amazing mm -hmm. or it could be one of the Dumbos. It now, was really well shot. That episode. Thank you. Oh, I did yeah. none of the was, shooting. It was fantastic. But how, but how just, did you guys coordinate it because it was in Japan? Do you fly with a crew? Or? Yeah, we flew with the, with a smaller crew and then we had people – there in Japan, mm -hmm. fixers and and um, uh, <clears throat> uh, locals who could help us, um, you know, navigate faster. How did you even set up with this guy? I was curious. You know what really helped is seasons one and two. Mm -hmm. We can say, look, we're really interested. Mm -hmm. We reach out to like Kyoto University's, um, you know, press group, and we say, hey, this is the show. And they watch and they go, oh, yeah, this is like not sensationalizing. Mm -hmm. They're really honestly kind of like promoting what's happening and please come out. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, the experiment was about memory. Yeah. And so these chimpanzees 
was mind blowing. They have a almost what seems to be a, at least some of them have to have like a picture perfect memory where all these numbers will flash quickly on the screen and all these different grids and the monkeys can do it all or the chimpanzees can do it all and and mem- remember it immediately yeah whereas you competed at one point against one of these chimpanzees and uh, and i mean obviously you didn't have to to know but like we are just on such a lower level in terms of memory yeah our our memory is so much less photographic mm-hmm. now i was at a huge disadvantage in that i'd never done it before right sure. if i did it Every single day for yeah, years, would I would get really good. Mm. But they found that a human just cannot reach the same average ability that a chimpanzee can. We just need a little bit longer. I think we're we're thinking about it a little bit too much. Mm. The chimpanzee is just going, I need to react to what's given to me. Whereas we're going, ah, oh, shapes and thoughts. And yeah. primarily, though, they found that it could be language. <clears throat> That theory that the fact that we can talk, that we have language, is what makes our memories so bad Mm -hmm. is controversial in some circles. (coughs) But I don't need to have a perfectly photographic memory if I can tell stories to remember things. Right. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, what did you have for lunch? I don't have to go pick the picture out. I can go, well, let's see. It's Jake's birthday. He likes to – oh, we had Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. And we had a pineapple cake because he loves pineapples. But it was (laughs) banana flavored. And I'm telling a story. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't have language, even if I didn't speak – my brain might still remember in that sort of way, not with English words, but with grammar, Mm -hmm. whereas the chimpanzee is just in that moment now. So this is the theory of the cognitive trade-off, that in order to develop language, we trade it off memory. I mean, there's only so much space in your brain for stuff. But what I thought about is, I don't know if you've seen this, there's this very, very rare condition called superior autobiographical memory. Are you Ah, familiar with that? Yeah. This is so uh, I watched this 60 minutes report. There's only 10 people so far in the world discovered with this ability and they have this ability to recall (laughs) any moment any day every single thing that's happened in their life with perfect recall. Now I've heard of it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know enough about it, so I'm a little skeptical. I have a How clip. Do we verify. Here, here, well, let me show you a clip. Okay. They test. They do all kinds Ten of tests. In the world. So this was a Could 60 be... Minutes report. Um, they remember exactly <clears throat> like uh, on a certain date what day of the week it was, right. how old they were, what, what they, they were, were doing. doing. Like if a current event happened. <laughs> as well, here, detailed as you want. Let me show you. Tested and proved to have superior autobiographical memory. October 1st, 8th. Total recall of every day of their lives. Extremely impressive. Delta Airline Flight 191 crashes near Dallas, Texas. Oh, I know exactly when that happened because uh, it was August the 2nd of 1985. It was a Friday. Such a gift has never been documented before. And scientists like Professor James McGaw are excited about where it may lead. Uh, One of them said it's like a Google search. That you put it in and and it just sort of and there it is, and and it, it it's the year and it's the month and it's the day and it sort of narrows in and it goes bang and they've got it and this all happens very quickly. It just actually I have another timestamp where they conducting some kind of experiment. This is kind of blowing my mind. I one of my best one friends Mary Lou has is this. this for real. Really? I, I mean I didn't know what it was called, but yeah, he, he has like this ridiculous ability to recall like down to the hour of the day events so throughout his life. So you want to get in touch with these yeah. researchers because they've only found 10 people in the world. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's genuinely blowing my mind because <laughs> my buddy, it, I've known him for years and it, we always just talked him up to being kind of a weirdo for having <laughs> this ability but uh, yeah, that's that's actually kind of crazy. Um, here, oh, uh, I'm Real hoping this is the right timestamp. For others though, like Jill Price, who was the first person to be diagnosed with this remarkable condition, it's a burden. Is it driving you crazy on the inside? Yeah, sometimes it does. Yeah. I mean, I really just want to be screaming at the top of my lungs most of the time, <coughs> and I can't do that. So I have to keep everything in check. When did you realize you had this ability? About five weeks after I turned 14, and I don't really know why on this day exactly, February 5th, 1980, But from that day until now, it's every day. And so, you know, you pull a date out, boom, it's like I'm right there. Every moment of every day. 
every. I have nothing so to add. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I want to show. There's just one part I want to show you where they rec- where they say specific days. Got it. Yeah, that's very every compelling. Day, yeah. Don't believe it? Well, let's do a test. Here you go, haters. Go and throttle up. <laughs> January 28, 1986. <laughs> um, Tuesday, January 28th. Damn. Somebody's a. <laughs> well, your I was five brain. days old. Uh, that that anniversary is actually day of coming the week, up. Was it? She just said it was a well, Wednesday. You were five did. days old. Um, I was five days old, and <laughs> probably um, not remembering anything. Maybe it was a Tuesday, but it's it's also my grandmother's birthday, the twenty eighth of January. Oh, so there's a lot uh, intersecting there. A lot us. of reasons why I would remember mm-hmm. the yeah. Challenger disaster right. date. I guess it's a lot of six, and the Super Bowl was the Sunday before. For a touchdown. John Lennon's assassination. That was December 8th, 1980. Do you remember what day of the week it was? Monday. I was in 10th grade. It blows my mind that you can remember that. That crash killed 274 people. The Chicago plane crash. The one in May 25th, 1979. That is the one. Yeah, I was in the 8th grade. I had just come back that week from having the chicken pox. Remembering historical events is one thing. But this goes a whole lot further. Well, May 8th, my grandmother had... Imagine having instant recall of what you ate for breakfast exactly 20 years ago today. What if I flip it around? I don't give you an event, but a date. The 28th of February, 97. Um, That was a Friday, (laughs) and I was leaving that day to go up to San Francisco, but we sort of got sidetracked by a bank robbery in North Hollywood. She's right. For an hour, North Hollywood was a... So there you have it. So there seems to be some people that have both brains coinciding. Both, um, it's, I don't know a lot about it. But you can see how much, how important it would be to learn. Like, first of all, like knowing the dates of like John Lennon's assassination and plane crashes, there are plenty of people who know all of those. Mm-hmm. But imagine being burdened in that yeah. way mm. by every detail being there. It almost makes you feel less bad about how the past and your memories keep fading away. Right. You only live in yeah. this kind of clear bubble but I, of a. I wonder if that's some kind of defense mechanism, you know, because it is a like this one lady that they interviewed in this was like, I love having this ability because you can imagine the utility of that is Mm -hmm. insane. I mean, you'd be able to excel at anything like way more to have that level of memory. But this lady says that it's a it's a I could see it being both. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, And I don't know what they've found since, you know, what's going on? Yeah. What are the limits of this and what might be the cause and what are some of the, the the. bad side effects yeah. yeah but you can also see how difficult psychology is mm. if you want to do physics and you want to talk about like the mass of a proton they all have the same mass mm-hmm. but memory all of our memories are different when you think of being <coughs> five what is it like do you see through your eyes do you see yourself from outside it's like right. what is it how, what's the fidelity of it is it like a is it like 4k is it like mm. 1080 we still don't really know and and everyone might be so different, it might be really hard to pin it down. Hmm. Mathematics and physics, it's kind of like, look, the speed of light is what it is. We've literally defined it to be yeah. something. Mm-hmm. But what is happiness? <laughs> yeah. I would like to get her in there to challenge that chimpanzee. <laughs> Do you think she would win? Because that is maybe a different skill. It's a different one, though, because I a, think. Yeah, that's a very different one. I think she would win. She's got this We got to get here. her out there to Japan. She no, has I, amazing episodic memory. She remembers episodes yeah. from her life. She doesn't have that photographic, like, instant yeah. memory from so? a scene. We gotta but there are people who do. <laughs> there are people who can look at a, yeah. a deck of cards right, all yeah. laid out, and then, and then uh, it's called an eidetic memory because it's mm. not quite like a photograph. If you, <clears throat> if you show them 52 cards laid out in order, and then you tell them, like, what card was in the corner, which one was here, they'll, mm. they'll know. But if you tell them which card had a tiny black dot somewhere, mm. they won't remember if they didn't commit that to memory. It's not like they are pulling up a photo they took, right, right. and they can look for details that they didn't see right. or, or attend to at first. Mm. So it's not quite a photographic memory. They call it eidetic now. Mm. So, I mean, what, what was your kind of takeaway from that whole experience in Japan? I mean, how long were you there? How long did it take to shoot that? 
we were there – well, we were there for like two weeks because we also did the episode on recording your dreams. Mm. That was done in a different part of Japan, but it was all underneath Kyoto University. Right. And so we were we were at the Primate Research Institute for like four or five days. And every morning we had to get there for like the chimps breakfast because <laughs> that's when the two really famous ones might come in. Right. <laughs> And we had to do like four mornings just to capture like, oh, my gosh, you know, I has come. What time are we talking about? I think it was like, you know, 730 a.m. Okay. But you're already so jet lagged. You're not like that's not it's not early. Right. You just we were on a very early to get up and early mm. to go to bed schedule. Now, were these chimp, these superstar <clears throat> chimps, were they was it the result of just like good, good genetics or were these the monkeys? the chimps that were there practicing all the time uh well they have trained for a long time because imagine like they don't just come out of the trees and go oh yeah i can do that yeah they have to learn what numerals are they have to learn how a touch screen works it takes yeah. a long time so <clears throat> but there's nothing special about them mm -hmm. otherwise it's not like we found some chimps that can do this well it's, you know there's a varying level of intelligence among humans i wonder how's that variance among chimpanzees I, i'm sure as well. and there's also um a, a variation by age you know mm -hmm. as they get older there's cognitive decline and right. so i who was born in the 70s she's now getting slower mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and that's who i went up against so i had yeah. a bit of, bit of an advantage mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um it's not it's not that these chimpanzees were like you know way above norm they're they're what a chimpanzee can do and we mm -hmm. used to be able to do the theory the hypothesis is that as as we split from chimpanzees through evolution we needed language to survive we didn't have mm -hmm. the safety of the trees we needed to be able to say you watch out while I get those scavenged remains. Mm -hmm. And you have to trust that I will give some to you. Mm -hmm. I'm near it. You're having to do lookout or you're having to do something else. Mm -hmm. But we have to communicate because we can't just be safe in the trees and grab berries all day. All right. But you can't develop language. Like You can't just go, all right, guys, let's just build a new lobe on our brain. Instead, mm -hmm. you have to take the cells and the structures that are already there and sacrifice some of them to you're doing language now. Right. And the hypothesis is that we gave away some of that eidetic memory, some of that short-term right. memory ability. A good trade-off, mm -hmm. evolutionarily, probably, eh? Probably. Yeah. Probably. But I don't want to judge. I but mean, who knows? I, it doesn't mean yeah. that, like, we're better than chimps. It yeah. just means we're, we're different. We were forced to be different to still be here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other one, the Stanford Prison Experiment. Yeah. also that, free. That, also free. Yeah. Um, this well, I'm, I always confuse with this the original experiment. Yeah, this original experiment was very famous. This guy set up a guards and prisoners dynamic, and just to tell tell a long story short, the guards became very cruel, right? To yeah. oversimplify it, but well, I guess I I'm confused about what theory he was driving that we are inherently more, like evil or manipulable or capable of of evil. I guess I just didn't really see the point of the experiment, and I've always doubted this this kind of theory that humans are born with a capacity of evil. But the Stanford Prison Experiment is often given as evidence that, see, at our root core, you just can't help it. <clears throat> People turn bad. And the Stanford Prison Experiment has been told as a story of it's not just bad apples. It's the bad barrel. Mm -hmm. If you put anyone in the wrong circumstance— they will mm -hmm. behave badly. Right. If you give people power and you depersonalize the others they have control over and all these things, then they'll just become bad. Do you Abu that's Ghraib, true? I mean, do you think that that was proven through their experiment? No. Yeah. I don't. I think that, that it is very true that the situation can have a lot more power than yeah. we might think. Right. But I don't think that it's the simple story of, oh, well, of course th these terrible things happen because they just do. Yeah. You know, e even nice people can go eat, go bad, right? That can happen, but I think it's way more complicated. Mm -hmm. And where the the people and their own personalities <clears throat> and the situations overlap and and have feedback loops with each other, it becomes really gray. Mm. Well, the one detail that actually I learned from watching this episode that I didn't know is that the researchers were um, were encouraging the guards yeah. off the record to be more cruel <clears throat> right which is something that they didn't disclose that part of the story the is rarely told yeah mm. that's a that's a, that 
modifies the results a yeah. lot. Yeah. There was one guy apparently who wasn't being cruel enough, and there's a recording of the of the researchers being like, "Hey, dude, you're gonna have to be more." You're gonna have to be more dominating. You have to be more forceful with them. Otherwise, this experiment's not gonna work. Yeah. And encouraging cruelty. In the episode, I got to talk with one of the guards from the experiment. Right. Uh, and he he explained that he thought he was working with the experimenters. He thought the whole point was we're gonna be cruel and see what people mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. We're going to show that prisons are all bad and need to be reformed. Mm. So he <laughs> thought he knew what the experiment was about. Right. And so he behaved in a certain way. And he was getting feedback from the research team. Mm. He could he knew that the cameras were recording them and that when he did creatively cruel things, they would like get a close up and they'd right. all go, ooh, wow. <laughs> and so he was encouraged in in, in his mind mm. to be mean. Yeah. Right. So that kind of throws into question what did we really learn from the Stanford prison experiment? I don't think that the whole thing should be called a hoax and written off. I think, it, first of all, it's incredibly important as a example of why you need to ethically study people. You can't just be like, let's get some young people and, I don't know, give them power over each other. And... What were the, some of the things the guards did, just for people who are listening who aren't <clears throat> familiar with that experiment? Well, you know, it d devolved into, like, m making the prisoners hump each other mm. in order to, you know, get bathroom breaks. Mm. It was, um, hey, you prisoner are going to be, you know, uh, locked in this closet until you eat because some hunger strikes happened. Mm. And then I think the guards would come up with like uh, scenarios like, OK, if you all don't choose a person to be punished, then you all lose your blankets. So mm. the prisoners had to go against each other, wow. stuff like that. that was These really were all twisted. volunteers, so... They were paid. Yeah. Okay. They were paid per day. Yeah. Uh, a pretty good amount, more than what you would get for uh, like a just a job, a college job, you know, mm -hmm. um, at that time. But um, it had to be ended early because it got so bad. Mm -hmm. Now, there was also like a whole nervous breakdown one of the prisoners had. But since then, he said that he was just acting because mm -hmm. he just he just wanted to study for his upcoming tests and they weren't letting he him wanted have to get out because I saw it. Was this the guy who was like, let me out? Yeah. Just started freaking out. <laughs> I'm up in here yeah. and then they were like okay this guy's like off his yeah he's gone he's gone um out of control right but really he was just doing that because he knew that they would have no choice but to like get him out of the well experiment. that's interesting yeah but i mean i get well at, so at any rate you think that this experiment prove what does it prove <laughs> if not that that humans are capable well, of not, all humans are i'm not sure what it proves yeah. but it 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 it's a great example in the textbooks, especially of like, this is why we have ethics review boards. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why we need to be careful. If you want to know what's in a proton, smash them together and look at what comes out. Mm -hmm. But you can't take someone's <laughs> brain, scoop a piece out and be like, now what's different? Oh, that would right, have been the part right. that allows you to answer my questions. Shoot. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be really careful. And, and there are <laughs> times in the history of psychology where that line has been crossed and we've, we've I think, become better. Mm. But I also think that the Stanford prison experiment, like the Milgram experiment, the one with the electric shocks, mm. shows us that people will do quite cruel things in the name of something bigger. Mm. And in Milgram and in Stanford, I think that was scientific progress. Mm. They said, well, this university is doing this and it must be important, so I don't feel so bad. I'm being told to do this by, you know, Someone that, whose, whose work I think is important. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we really learned from the Stanford prison experiment. Right. We still need to do a lot of work on where that balance is between what makes someone do evil mm. or, or what makes someone become a hero. Right. So your, the experiment you did in the video or in that episode when they're in the dark room, that yeah. was based on the Milgram one? That was That was our attempt to... Play around with how how would you run something like the Stanford Prison Experiment but have absolutely no demand <laughs> characteristics, meaning no expectations on the part of the participants that they were supposed mm. to behave in any way. Because everything we kept hearing was that the participants in the prison experiment all thought they had to take on this role. Oh, I'm a prisoner, so I right. guess, like, what do prisoners do? Well, they're obedient okay. or they riot. I'll do yeah. one of those two. Mm -hmm. We said, what if we don't give them – what if we just give them numbers – we don't tell them that we're recording certain data and we just see if given the opportunity to hurt someone, knowing that you would never get caught for it, mm -hmm. 
would you do it? And we really struggled. We also cast the most like benevolent people we could Yeah, find. they were all sweethearts. Because all we <laughs> wanted to show is that there's a point where you just you will not get the results that you saw at the Stanford Prison Experiment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not an either or. People mm -hmm. are either good or you put them in the, the, the <laughs> rotten barrel and they all turn into rotten apples. I was wondering, were you wanting to do something more <laughs> extreme? Was there ever a point when YouTube was like, eh, let's not do it that way? Um, it, that, it was the, it was a weird episode because we developed that one after season three had already been approved. Right. And so I was busy making all the other seven episodes and still having to come up with, well, what's the Stanford prison thing? Mm. And the more we looked into it, we talked to a lot of psychologists and they were all like, you know, if you do it today, it's just a reality show. Mm. Mm. The BBC did a fantastic version that was much more rigorous and they were looking at sort of group cohesion and it was very cool, but you know, they had a huge facility and they had a, a lot of time. It's mm. all they did. Yeah. We were only able to spend an eighth of our time and resources on this, right? Because we had seven other episodes. Yeah. So, you know, I think when you say Stanford prison experiment, people get a little scared and they think it's gonna go too far. So we were even proposing stuff like, um, there's this uh, really fantastic experiment involving <coughs> hot sauce. Mm. And, and you, you as a participant have to measure out an amount of hot sauce to force someone else to drink. Mm. And YouTube was like, too that dangerous. Was too far? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I mean, hot we've ones. electrically shocked people in previous seasons <laughs> and hot sauce, there's like a popular show on YouTube yeah. where right. that's all people do, yeah. you know? And they I think they, they were just so scared that Stanford Prison Experiment uh, was going to violate ethical rules that we the, the hot sauce could not be hotter than Tabasco, stuff like that, right? Oh my God. <laughs> I had a feeling that they... That they had their hands in the, uh, but I appreciate some of those challenges because it forced us to be better and right. to be like, you know what? Maybe we don't need. Maybe the punishing <coughs> can be something that's not quite so cartoony. Mm -hmm. uh, but the hot sauce has actually worked in like serious studies. Uh, so we used the noise, mm. and I think it was almost more insidious because we were able to say we played it off like we didn't really know how loud it was or what was safe. We just said anything below a seven should be safe. Right. Meaning should be safe. Mm -hmm. So if you crank that dial up secretly, <laughs> it's like a you a, could be mm -hmm. really yeah. hurting someone. Right. But no one would know that it was you who did it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Will people be that cruel? And in the end, they they were not really, <clears throat> were they? No, they only ever responded um, in kind. It was just yeah. I'm surprised by that. They never they never cranked it up. I, you could. Easily find people who would. Sure, mm -hmm. but it's not quite as easy as anyone you want put into a prove dark that room. You could. With the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Michael, are you a tits or an ass man in the end? Because we did never get an answer on that. <laughs> I ask myself that every day. Really? And do you, do you ever find resolve within your soul on that issue? Yeah. Which is the answer? You're a corn man. I'm a corn man. <laughs> yeah. How can you not love that? I'm, I'm personally, it's a tough call between tits and ass, but um, I respect the, that you dodged it, and so I won't press you much, much harder on that. Did I dodge it? Or well, corn is not a, <laughs> unless you're rubbing your dick on that corn later. You're thinking too small. Oh, that's, I see. So you liked it, well, corn for me, when I see you eat corn, reminds me more of, like, are you saying that you like vagina the best? Because eating, you're like eating corn, dude. Raw corn. Yeah. <clears throat> like when, because when you eat corn, it is kind of co like uh, coital. What's or not coital. What's coital. Not coital. <laughs> what's it called? What's the technical name when a man eats out of a woman? Uh, is it cunnilingus? Yeah, cunnilingual. Yeah. It's quite cunn cunnilingual. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just trying to eat my raw piece of corn. Yeah. He's, he's a vagina. Shot. Man. He's a vagina man. Um, I want to go to questions from the fans. We've got some great ones here yeah. to share. But guys, if you've got YouTube Red or not, get it. Head on over to Vsauce channel. Watch Minefield Season 3. Is there a four in the works? Is three the final season? Mm. YouTube Premium, Dan, uh, Dan has corrected YouTube Premium. Me. YouTube Sorry. Premium. Sorry. Um... I can't say too much. I can't say too much, but okay. you know what? There's a lot of really awesome things on the horizon. You got a lot of opportunities. I'm making <clears throat> choking on corn right here. Let me just take a little sip. <laughs> Pubic uh, hair in this analogy that I've painted. <clears throat> Ethan. 
you're really trying to connect some things here, and I'm really glad you are. But corn has <laughs> has gained a new lo- depth, unless that's what you originally meant. But you know, minefield season four, yeah. like it all comes back to that, doesn't it? Yes. Um, I've been doing I've do- been doing a video every single week on the Dong Channel. Yeah. Vsauce One will get a lot of fresh mm-hmm. free videos this year. I'm very mm-hmm. excited. I I bit off way more than I could chew last year, mm. and I remember it was literally December of last year. Wait. That was not very long ago. December of 2016. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working on an episode about torques and rotation, and it became the Leaning Tower of Liar that I put on Dong because I didn't really have time to like make it as as kind of like com- complete as I wanted, hmm. and I needed to promote brain candy hmm. in Australia. And then I realized how little I knew about physics and classical mechanics and I and calculus, and I was like, I need to get back to basics, and I need hmm. to learn a lot. <laughs> Right. So I have been reading oh, wow. and learning. That's I think I've become a better person. And Great. so I, I'm grateful that people are patient. Absolutely. In the meantime, I've done more videos than I ever have before. Dong is out Dong. there. Yeah. One should be coming Wait, out today. You... Oh, great. Cool. Yeah. Well, Michael, you're one of the hardest working people on YouTube. You are out there yeah. shaking your dick. And people... you are out there gnawing on the corn yeah, cobs. Yeah, you're eating corn, boy. Damn. Lucky lady. Your wife. Should we cook it first? No. <laughs> your wife is a lucky lady, dude. I'm a lucky man. <laughs> With the way you chomp corn? I'm going to stop chewing on corn during <laughs> this. <laughs> All right, let's go to the questions. Guys, yeah, please. number one on the list, we've got the other AKS asks, if you can do any experiment in the world without moral value stopping you, <clears throat> what would you do? How would, how, would it not, how would it not stop me? Well, let's say ethical questions aside. Is there an experiment you'd like to conduct? that ethics would normally stop you from doing. Yeah, I mean, let's say we're able to Like create... drinking hot sauce, God forbid. Y- right. <laughs> let's say let's say we're able to create, like, artificial uh, minds. Boy, even then I might think that it should have rights. <laughs> but let's, let's worry about that question a little bit later. I would really love to watch a human mind grow in isolation, never mm. learn a language, mm. never meet another human. There was a case of that, the mm. wolf girl, right? Or something. There, there are some part. really unfortunate cases where yeah. it's, 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 I mean, it's child abuse. Mm. Yeah, of course. And <clears throat> so, I mean, yeah, there are even ancient <coughs> experiments where they were like, oh, we took these n- newborn babies and put them in a room and never did anything. And, wow. Wow. Because we wanted yeah. to see what language they would speak. What is the, like, the true first language of, of, of humans? And, you know, everyone's like, oh, it was Greek, it was Hebrew, or whatever. But obviously but, they never learned language, right? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but their brains were still, uh, you know, wired uh, for grammar, mm. for thinking in the way that language works. But we don't know a lot because it's really hard to, to develop experiments on it. Right. So I would love to get... <laughs> Artificial minds. That's a great answer. Maybe minds that run at faster speeds so we can really see like seven years of learning mm-hmm. in a day. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. Um, but, but that still raises problems now, of like, look, if you've got an artificial mind yeah. that's that close to a human mind, it has, don't unplug it because right. yeah. it's going to have dreams and ambitions mm-hmm. and sure. hopes and fears. Yeah. Now, I, now, in the case of these children who are gro- like raised in captivity... Are their brain development <clears throat> stunted by never having learned language, I wonder? I, I honestly don't know enough. I know that it's incredibly detrimental. Oh, yeah. Our brains are sponges, and right. we mm-hmm. learn, and um, <laughs> it's hard to learn language if you don't learn it within the right period of time when you're younger. Mm-hmm. Sure. Right. Uh, the most famous case is Jeannie. And last I heard, I think she is still alive. She's very old. She's mm-hmm. um, a ward of the... Uh, state of California, mm. but no one can find her or interview her. But yeah, she was raised like locked in an attic oh. and, and never learned um, to speak. I think she is is capable of some things now. Mm. But yeah, that's when we that's really so realize. Like, how do you even frame your thoughts when you don't have language? Right. Well, you can. It's not like people who don't speak don't think, right? Well, do, who don't have any language because you can have people who have sign language. Or people who communicate in ways, yeah. but if you're grown in isolation, you don't even communicate with people. What would you do? How would you, yeah, right. how do you form thoughts? You know, I actually... Or an inner dialogue. I actually asked Terrence Deacon at Berkeley this that very question mm-hmm. for the chimpanzee episode, 
and it turned into a bonus clip. And I literally cannot remember what his answer was. Hmm. He may have said, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he, 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 I think hazarded a guess about what is it like? Are you conscious if you don't have language? Like, are they or really like an connected? inner dialogue? <clears throat> I think I remember right. there's a great book called Things I Believe But Cannot Prove. Mm-hmm. And it's just tiny, short little like paragraph answers written mm-hmm. by some really smart people. And I believe one of them, I could be misremembering, but one of them was like, I believe that you need language to be conscious. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I was like, geez, the, mm-hmm. this, it's full of crazy things. Like, I, look, I'm like the director of this big institute and I can't prove this, but here's my personal mm-hmm. belief. That's great. That's cool. Thought provoking. Yeah. You know what I love? I would love to clone human beings. I want to take a dude, yeah. clone him five times. Just much like the movie uh, <clears throat> Duplicity or whatever it was called with Michael Keaton. Do they get dumber every time? Are they how much like the original are they? These are fascinating yeah, questions. But... I want to make duplicity <laughs> multiplicity. Thank you, Dan in real life. The problem is that when you clone a person. Awesome. Now you have a little like cell mm-hmm. and it'll become whatever the, pro- the, the, the blastocyst and fetus and whatever mm-hmm. it, d- it doesn't come out of a machine fully grown yeah. at, a, at like the age of 30 or something it's right, a baby it's a kid. it has the same dna <laughs> as the adult that you up clone. what happens way. if you raise yourself though like wouldn't that be wild but you're it's not raising person. yourself yeah. you're raising a totally distinct That's human right. with the same yeah. dna what do we do but about so that? much is not from we dna gotta, we gotta we have to circumvent that somehow that would be a great experiment on environmental verse First nurture though. Create the exact it's same literally environment. Literally the same person. Put the same fingerprints, for instance, don't come from your DNA. Huh. Identical twins have the same DNA but different fingerprints because these just form through random motions in the womb. Hmm. Mm. So I've even heard, I think I heard this from Adam Savage, who has twins. And he was like, hmm. identical twins raised together are more different than identical twins separated at birth. Hmm. Really? Because of that pressure to be different, right. mm. if you don't have someone to be different from, you just follow your nature more. Mm. This is all That's hypothetical. <laughs> this is that book. That's the other thing we don't have a lot of data on is like, what is it like when twins are separated at birth? Mm-hmm. Because we just don't do that. Mm. <clears throat> Ever since Minefield began, I've been like, find me twins separated at birth. Mm. And our teams have looked at you know adoption agencies, and they've gone and looked at other countries where there's a little bit less paperwork done on, and we, this happens mm. more often. And we have not found. There's Golly. a documentary though That'd be great. that just came out and kind yeah. of like, well now now it's been done. <laughs> I don't know if this is like a, a true, but or this is some fantastical like thing. But I swear to God, I've seen a show about this that an identical twin separated at birth ended up marrying the same identical twins separately so two dudes separated at birth ended up marrying identical twins separately right michael i feel like you know the real story i don't know the real story but i've heard so many of these like ripley's believe it or not but i've seen it (laughs) twins separated at birth never knew each other existed and then they both have dogs named bob and they both work as plumbers and they (laughs) both married blonde women named amy and they you know (laughs) <laughs> I don't know how much of that is true. The Minnesota twin study is the, the only one I can think of that's like a really classic, rigorous, but a lot of work is still being done. It's just hard to find mm. twins separated at birth. Man. Uh, next up, we've got, uh, what is your favorite unsolved scientific question slash phenomenon by buttholes? <clears throat> with a Z at the end. Ooh, Dr. <laughs> buttholes. Yes. He's always got the greatest question. Yes. <laughs> My favorite unsolved, unsolved or unsolvable. Whatever you like. I mean, I'm really, I love fundamentals. So I'm thinking the, 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 the multiverse theory. Mm. How can we develop an experiment or can we to really test how big our universe is? Mm. If it's infinite in extent, then because there's only a finite number of quantum states you can have in a certain region, it's been calculated that like a Googleplex light years away, just odds are there's another you. Mm. 
Because if, if, we have, if matter's all kind of the same everywhere, then you know, we only live in this observable universe that is, is, its size depends on how fast light has traveled to us. Mm-hmm. But if there's, there's no edge to it, it's not like there's a wall, there's just more. It's just we can't see it. We mm-hmm. can't observe it. It can't affect mm-hmm. us. It's always growing. But I guess what I'm trying to get at here is <clears throat> I heard in Max Tegmark's um, Mathematical Universe book just recently the idea that the, the laws of physics themselves could be different right. because space itself can have maybe different states, just like water can be ice and liquid mm. and gas. There could be other parts of the universe, like all of it, not just the part we can see, mm. where space is different, mm. where its permeability to electromagnetic radiation is different and light it, it operates. I don't know. But the constants, the, the concepts of conservation of momentum, like these could literally be different. Mm. And we could try to replicate that if we had enough energy here. But mm. basically... It sounds very sci-fi, but I'm just troubled by the fact that it's like, yep, yep, light travels at that speed. And I'm like, yeah. but. <laughs> well, what I've heard about that is like multiverses, uh, like different universes could have different properties. But you're saying it's possible the same universe. We have to define universe. So universe really clearly is just before. reality. Ev- everything. The universe yeah. is everything. Yeah, okay. So then what would you call a parallel different space? To like what we occupy, Uh, I guess with different properties of matter. Right. So I forget how how, what the diameter of our observable universe is. It's billions of light years, right? And it keeps getting bigger as light from further back reaches us finally. But Mm -hmm. like way over here, there's another you know. So it's of the spherical region hmm. that could also have you know galaxies and (laughs) Earth and but. There are, there, there are different levels of multiverse, like level one, level two, and these are different theories. And one theory allows for the possibility for the laws of physics themselves to be different mm. from one to the other. Mm-hmm. And this leads to the whole question of like, well, of course the laws of physics are what they are because the, the ones we have are conductive to things existing like us that can ask why they exist. Right. But in a universe where, I don't know, energy isn't conserved the same way or mm-hmm. something – you might just not be able to get complex life forms that can never go, now, what's this energy thing about? Mm-hmm. So. Mm. So experimenting, discovering what's <clears throat> going on with all Traveling these Traveling faster than light, yeah. I'd also like to do. Would you, if you could go on a one-trip journey around the universe at yeah. the speed of light, would you do it? Because if you travel the known universe at the speed of light, I remember Carl Sagan saying something like, it would take you like 50 years. But by the time you got back to Earth, like a billion years would have passed or something. Would you take that spaceship ride? Uh, well, as I get older, I feel less like I would. Yeah. Because I'm not as alone. Yeah. I've got true. a wife. Yeah. We want to have kids. When I was like totally single, I'd be like, yeah. leave yeah. now, <laughs> come back in 10 years of my time to an earth that's a million years older. Yes, mm-hmm. I'll be a celebrity. <laughs> but now I'm like, I kind of need to be here. For the people in my life now. By the time you get back, they may have already been like, dude, we already, our science is crazy. We already figured all this shit out. Exactly. And there's, <laughs> yeah. there's a name for that problem where, like, I could get start on my journey and, like, two seconds in, people show up they're in the year 5,000 and they're like, right. hey, man, like, we're already, like, way ahead of you. Bro. Like, kind of wasted <laughs> yeah. uh, your whole trip. That's funny. Yeah. What's the point, too? It's like, you come back, you know, I mean, what good really did it do you? Right. You're probably right. exposed to a lot of cosmic rays and radiation. Yeah. Um, you you are a living piece of history. Yeah. Yeah. You'll come back and they'll be like, ah, do you remember this band, the Beatles? <laughs> and you're like, it's pronounced Beatles. And they're like, we never knew because no recordings exist. And mm-hmm. you're able to like be our – imagine if we had an ancient Egyptian here right. who could be like – Here's how we built them. Like, I was there. Here's what my day-to-day life was. Here's mm-hmm. here's what my cognitive processes are like. like. Here's how I think and feel and how I describe that. We'd be like, wow, dude. But we'll probably be able to upload brains for, like, in the next hundred years, and that whole trip will be, like, way more difficult to make. When we can do that, we can just, you know— Build a copy of my brain, <laughs> and I don't die. I'm this consciousness that lives in a 3D printed neural. That I'm signing up for. Sculpture. Um, what is one? I'm here. Let me say this. On that topic, I would not choose to live forever as a 3D printed 
neural connectome. I don't want to be 3D printed. I just want to be in the cloud. Same. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Cloud. Yeah. I want to die. You do. I think it's important for me to be like, all right, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Not soon. Yeah. But that there's it's an time for it's yeah. There, it's time for someone else to be the adults. I want to be in the cloud. <laughs> that's fine. That's perfect. I want to be in the cloud not, eating burgers and not saying... getting fat forever. <laughs> Anyone has that's to decide. That's all you care about. <laughs> yeah. It's very personal. But see, <laughs> if you're in the cloud, you kind of already moved on. It's like the not to be a... Dude, in the Matrix, I, there's this scene. The guy, he's eating the steak. He's like, I know the steak's real. Just put me back in the Matrix because the steak is delicious. Yeah. That's me. It doesn't have to be a real steak. I identified more with him than Neo. I was like, put me back, baby. <laughs> the deliciousness is... Yeah, I want is... the steak. <laughs> it's real in a way. Like, yeah. fine. I'd kill all my friends for a steak. That's what he did, basically. Well, As the vegan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Maybe it's getting in my head. Um, what is... This is fi- finally here. We've got, what is one question you would want to be answered in your lifetime? Oh, geez. Oh, well, easy... For me, it's, um, are we alone in the universe? Yeah, that's the Is big there, one. okay, I mean, just finding well, some kind of- Well, the scope of what's out there, right? Just finding, like, bacteria yeah. that clearly did not come from Earth contamination, like it developed on its own, mm. that alone would- That'd be great. Change What are the chances world? you think that there's a little something on Mars for us to discover? I think- It seems low. Based on that little squeak. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a bit low, to be honest. What are the chances that there's intelligent life out there? <coughs> on Mars? Or you mean just in the Out universe? there. Yeah. I'd say 100%. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Me too. I'm convinced. So. Will we ever be able to contact them? Space is too big. I think 0%. Yeah. The thing is, what, like, what is, like, there's just, it's so, it's just such a shame. Right? It's just such a shame. I feel like there's got to be a way. Like, a hundred years ago, two hundred, a thousand years ago, people couldn't fathom what it's like to be alive today, what it's like to use the internet, what it's like to fly, what it's like to walk on the moon. I feel like it's just such a shame that if there is other intelligent life out there, we're going to eventually, we're going to shake their hand and have a hamburger. And a We're just limited, but we don't by know how. Light. But that's the thing. Maybe you bend. Maybe you don't actually have to go the speed of light. Maybe you just have to bend space time. Sure, sure. Compress the space in between yeah. us because space can move I mean, faster who, than light. It who is. knows? Expanding, right? Who knows what the mechanism? It, could there's be. a thing called like the Alcubierre <laughs> drive. It's just a hypothetical idea for right. a spacecraft that curves and bends and stretches space behind and in front of it and can travel faster than light because it's just the space that it inhabits that right. moves fast. If we could do that, then I, I li- we've reached a point where we need to start naming the years differently. Mm. You know, we say like a- BC, AD, that's like this big thing that like separates humanity into two halves. If we develop faster than light travel or discovered intelligent life and, and like made contact, that's another <coughs> one of those moments where it's like, okay, there was a before and then now there's an after. Mm-hmm. But also another scenario is like, let's say that humanity can, lives an additional 10 million years. Like we go the long haul, yeah. baby. We go interplanetary. We can spread so slowly, but so inevitably. Mm. If we can just get to a new solar system somehow, that's, we're going all the way. I mean, it's just a matter of time, right? Yeah, I agree. And, and like, how close is the next solar system? Like, a light year? More than that. The nearest one that's, like, habitable. I don't know. Not even, I mean, we we don't, don't, we don't totally know. But maybe we can hibernate, right? Hibernate, get in there, 100 years maybe, you know? Sure, if it's 30 light years away, 300, I think they're even closer than that, Michael. I think there's one that's, like, three, like, in single digits light years away. We don't probably know everything about the planets there, but you may as well go. Might as well send some fucking hamsters out. And then... Because we new... already erased ethics in our hypothetical anyway. Yeah, we're not concerned about the ethics. No. 
I'd rather send people than well, hamsters. Well, also robots. <laughs> a lot of people say robots are going to be the ones that, in, that inhabit the, I know, I know. the Borg. But, but why that, should the robots get to have all that fun? But it <laughs> makes sense because they don't even need to breathe the goddamn they, air. They don't need the air. They don't need anything yeah. except a little squirt of oil, presumably. Yeah, I need to get <laughs> greased up. Yeah. What were you guys doing when I got here? Everyone was, like, really greasy. Oh, we just... I don't know why... We you... had the smoke machine in a box. Oh, and... It and just got the, the oil fluid. everywhere. The I fluid. thought you guys were kidding, because Michael came in and he's like, y'all no. are so greasy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, No one would shake my yeah. hand. I was like, listen, <laughs> Michael, these are a good bunch of people, and I resent you calling them Wait, greasy. Wait, your smoke machines are using oil, not, like... What no, smoke like the, the liquid, whatever the liquid Wait, what is. smoke machines? What are we talking about? <laughs> what the hell were you guys doing back there? Am I spoiling some upcoming, like, smoke No, not at all. We're just reorganizing our office during this break. You mean big vape? No, we have an old uh, smoke machine that was just in oh, one okay. of the bins oh. with blankets and stuff. Mm. And I, I was just going through it and found a bunch of the liquid on everything. You got all gooed up. Like it spilled out. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that'll do it. It felt oily, so we said we're oily. I don't know that it's oil. Yeah, that's don't introduce yourself. Don't introduce yourself that way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a greasy right now. <laughs> I'm just like, elbow bump. I'm a, I'm a mess. Bad I, hygiene. Well, unfortunately, I think that most likely computers, the robots are gonna are gonna be the ones to get all the fun. But will they enjoy it? No, probably not. And another philosophical question. If we send a bunch of robots out to space and they end up colonizing the whole Milky Way. Do we even, how do we even know, like, even if they pass the Turing test and whatever, and they're, like, self-aware, how do we even know that there is anything inside those tin boxes? And you could just be sending out a bunch of tin boxes to colonize all of the Milky Way, and they're just acting out of programming and impulse, but truly, they're just empty boxes. I could say the same about you. No, you cannot. How do I I know? (laughs) How do I know that you're not a philosophical zombie? You act like a human, but you have no internal self-awareness or consciousness. I'm telling you, that's just I know not you do. true, that's exactly Michael. what a Listen, zombie robot would say. We took a picture of corn together. Yeah. We made it really blurry. I told you about the flavor of the corn. But did that's you, real did as you really gets. feel that flavor? Or are you I just going, it. beep, boop, beep, boop, corn tastes good and creamy? Yeah, I said that. I'm just being really mean to robots right now. (laughs) Yeah, you're already a robot racist. It's safer to just assume. By the way, that's going to be super insensitive in 100 years. Beep, boop, 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 cream, (laughs) corn. Yeah. You're going to be canceled. Everyone's going to be like, dude, Michael was such a shitbag back then. (laughs) They will. There'll be robots being like, I can't believe this. Michael is canceled. Here he is doing his robot impression. (laughs) Outraged robots. Beep, boop, I have no soul because I'm a robot. (laughs) Wow, 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 wow. Ooh, send me out to outer space with oil. Yeah, how rude. But in my Racist. defense, <laughs> robots now are very different than robots in the future. That said, it's probably You're... safest to just always assume that something <laughs> has consciousness and a mind, like even a cockroach. Just, you know what? I don't Gross. I can't be convinced that you don't have a hope for tomorrow, so I'm not going to kill you. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Hila doesn't feel that way, though. You're just like, give me that meat sandwich. Oh, I'm, I hope it I'm suffered. I'm so not the meat no person here in this room. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, you we were covered a lot of ground. I have to say, I yeah. think this show. And now that it is vegan, I'm going to go right back to it. I think the show went off the rails when we stopped talking about <laughs> poop. Poop. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say it, but it definitely Which, happened. It was like, that, if, wasn't if that you, like the first five minutes? No, it was like the it first like hour. 45 minutes at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you get us off poop, it's just <laughs> turn it off. The show went it, off it's the rails. really bad. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any other th- huge things to talk about. I mean, aliens is it, really. The other one would be kind of like, um, I would like to see a fully kind of sustainable, like if we could harness the sun's energy yep. like truly and fully, that would be fantastic. We'll get there. I don't have but any. But just imagine having like f- basically unlimited free energy. Yeah. I mean, that is something, isn't it? A space elevator so we can get stuff Ooh, up that'd out be there fantastic. with much less effort. Yeah. Uh, were there any questions people asked that you were like, I cannot ask him that? What's the worst question one was, anyone asked? One, well, it's not that it was I can't ask him. It just seemed kind of dumb. Was why is the pee stored in the balls? No one knows. That was like the number two. All we know is that it is. Right. right. So. <laughs> <laughs> what well, were you supposed to surprise me today, Zach? <laughs> giddy up. He hit you with some, with some goose. What was it? The giddy up? 
some Kramer stuff. Yeah. Okay, mm. cool. You got me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I told um, Zach, I, our sound lad, I said, I want you to surprise me today. Hit me with something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blow me out of the water. Did he? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! He hit me with some Kramers. <laughs> There's one. Yeah. Yeah, he did good. He tried his best. <laughs> Those are never get old. Did you just make that noise by pushing a button? No, that was He that. did. <laughs> what do all these buttons do? They do. God damn it! That was me. I thought that the me. bitch was white! This is me. Mm, no, no, no! This is me. This is Ethan. So, and so on. <laughs> yeah. And the best one. <laughs> yeah, he was... That's a good one. That's a better one. <laughs> okay, this is my favorite. Yeah, I'll stop. <laughs> I was really enjoying that. I've always wanted to be <laughs> yeah. in a in a curb your enthusiasm meme. Well, you want to take a shot? <laughs> Nobody's watching. So deep. <laughs> what do these? <laughs> what? Do, oh, wow! It's really easy to know what things yeah. are. Yeah. It's like a toy. It's got gifts and it's listen, like listen to this. I am a robot. I don't have rights. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Oh, no. That's, That's the crowd. future. Yikes. That's the future calling. Uh, sorry, Michael, you're scumbag. What, what about this? <laughs> oh sh. Yeah. I don't. Sorry, <laughs> it said tension. I... No, yeah, no. That well, you're right. It's a it's a song for our game shows. Watch this. Here, watch this, Michael, right there. Oh, okay. Hey, thanks for playing. I want to show you something. <laughs> um, if you I push it again, it will stop. Yeah. <laughs> This is the H3 podcast. Did it work, Dan? Trans- oh, no. Okay. Hold on. You looking why for see, you looking for transcendence? Ring? Yeah, transcendence. Wait, why does it say ring? I think it it, it must have been pointed at the wrong uh, <laughs> <laughs> Every time I push ring. it it just says ring.com. <laughs> all right. The ring is getting all the love. Are you making like 5 bucks every time you push <laughs> that button? I, I should be. Yeah, there you go. Look. Wow. Cha ching. I mean, yeah, ching ching. Do you got a money sound effect? Hit me with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> but here's a gazebo. Here, you, this one should work. Here, watch the preview. This oh, yes. Yeah, so, this is a good gazebo, gazebo zone. <laughs> so, we've got that on the soundboard. Whose idea was that? Oh, she right over there. <sighs> probably a collaborative effort. <laughs> yeah. As many I things are. I appreciate that one. Yeah. I really want to push this one. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. I won't lie. This is definitely <laughs> me when I'm driving. Yeah. You're a SoFlo fan? A, fi- a fan of the finer things? I was, a, I, look, I've been a fan. I mean, you know, I don't want to say that I, like, made him. Yeah. But I was so much original content. How could it come from one person? Yeah, I know. He's fantastic. <laughs> it, why, <laughs> why Why? did I start Vsauce? SoFlo. Yeah. Inspired me. Yeah. Nice. I was like, how can I ever attain that? I won't lie. This is me when I'm Vsauce, Michael, inspired. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Well, actually, interestingly, that was the when I first um, found Liza Koshy, and right. we interviewed her for that video because he stole, he was like, I won't lie, this is me when I'm driving. And, you, as you know. and, and it was her video. That <laughs> yeah, right. and it was her video. <laughs> and it went, like, mega viral on Facebook. It got, like, 50 million views. <laughs> Oh man, those are the those are the good times. You know what's sad? I don't remember the video that comes after his intro. Right. Oh, it's so good. What was the? It, it was just Liza dancing in the car, dancing while listening driving music, like, yeah. and listening to music. But she's so funny. That oh. is so yeah. totally so flow when he's driving though. Right? Yeah, no, <laughs> totally. It's so so flow. I won't lie. And you could tell. This is definitely me when I'm driving. You can tell. <laughs> he, he won't lie. You can tell he just like snapped that on his phone while he yeah. was driving, like just on the way to somewhere. And threw it up on Facebook, it, just boom. It's so genuine. It's so in yeah. the moment. It's so right. candid. Yeah. He's He's got got you can't build instincts like that. Let's, you can be born with them. Let's send SoFlo to Mars. <laughs> I think there's a chance there's something under there, though. Deep down? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> like I would, deep down where it's warm, I think there might be some shit. It'd be cool if we found proof of some kind of life and realized, oh, man, life began on Mars. Yep. When the sun was, I don't know, I think it was warmer or cooler in the past. I don't know. Don't quote me on this stuff. But then, asteroid hits Mars, ejects some stuff, makes its way to Earth, lands, and then comes back to life. All of a sudden, now we're here. What do you call we that? Something with Mars. sperm. Panspermia. I just remember oh. the sperm. <laughs> Panspermia. Isn't that amazing? 
unlike panpupia, which is the correct way to cook poop. <laughs> Panspermia <laughs> does make a lot of sense, though. Doesn't it? Because it, it's kind of like the <laughs> macro version of pollination. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, and it, it makes it easier to understand how something that would seem unlikely could happen. We already have a lot of time. The universe is old, so right. just crazy stuff will happen. Right. Like self-replicating molecules, mm-hmm. DNA, whatever. Right. But if you allow it to happen anywhere then in the universe, the and place. then it can spread. Yeah. Almost like a cancer. Of course we're here. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Well... I'm on a vegan diet, and I'm sh- farting and shitting a lot. <laughs> and so I probably should hit the John. I've been having diarrhea since I started this vegan diet. What are you eating? I don't know if you're eating well. Well, I think I am. Uh, lots of avocado, Maybe lots of beans. it's still from before. I had, a, f- I had a meal, a day of eating so putrid, it turned me vegan. <laughs> I had, like, McDonald's, and I ate it, and then I made a pizza, and Eel didn't want any, and I ate it all. And I was like, bro, this- You have to hit rock bottom sometimes. <laughs> I better. did. I did. I hit rock bottom. And I was like, man, I want to see my son turn like 20 at least. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I, I went vegan. Yeah. But I'm having diarrhea. And I feel sick and tired and scared. That's not good. You should feel <laughs> and confused. better. You should yeah. really check out like good vegan restaurants. Yeah. And not, a don't just, I want to go to don't veggie. Just, Take what you normally eat and throw out the stuff <laughs> that has meat in it. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. really look at... I've been eating, like, order out Mexican food almost uh, Indian almost food exclusively. It's often vegan. That's it's definitely true. vegetarian, and mm. it's delicious. Mm. Fascinating. The Indian kitchen. I'll, I'm not afraid to just shout them out. They are the best. Mm. In Indian LA. kitchen? Okay. Yeah. I'll they don't deliver out. to where my wife and I live now, so we just have to drive out and get it. Oh, it's worth the drive. Where <sighs> yeah. are they located? Um... What part of the town? Uh, you don't want to say? Google Maps it. I, oh, okay. You don't know. Look, I'll look it up. Well, I was just curious if it's close to us. Is uh, all. We don't need to. Probably not so Oh, well, bad. then it... The, oh, oh, okay. I thought you did a little twist. I thought you were going to say it's probably not close. But what he it ended up doing, Hila, is saying it's probably not so bad. <laughs> we should end the show. <laughs> yeah, because I've got a silver chest I want to unlock. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't, <laughs> well don't let me... Uh, Can I, okay, look. Let here's where the Indian you. kitchen is. <laughs> So, West Hollywood. That's out of my, uh... That's... uh, 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 We're living in an apartment right now as we renovate the house. Are you renovating? Is it the... So, it's not the house I visited you once at? No, no. Oh, well, congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. That is terrific. A huge step. Yeah. Is it at, uh... Would you call it your dream home? I mean... My wife's gonna be living there, so yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I won't lie. This is definitely <laughs> me when I'm driving. This is definitely me when I bought my dream home. <laughs> yeah. Uh no, we're really happy. It's so That's cute. Great. Um That's awesome. our first like trip together was to that same area to an area. Oh, that's so mm-hmm. we're just like wow, full circle. That's cool. Uh but the point of all of this was the Indian kitchen, we ho. <laughs> mm-hmm. We ho. I would love to be sponsored by like super local brands, mm. not be like, hey, uh, you know, Skillshare.com, go and use this code. I'd rather be like, you know, the, the Indian, Indian Kitchen <laughs> at 325 Alameda Street. They would get is... their money's worth. They would, you, you think would they blow... would? Yeah, you would blow. Like if we were sponsored by a local restaurant, I feel like we would blow them up. People would want to go eat there. You know what? I didn't invent this concept. I think the Dana Carvey show did this. Mm. Like every episode had a sponsor, and it, it began with, like, Mountain Dew, Dorito, the big ones. And then the final episode was, like, you know, Mr. Lee's Chinese restaurant, just, like, across the street mm. from the studio. Because, mm. like, he just, his ratings were so low that he, the only sponsor he could get was oh, them. that's amazing. And it was hilarious, but I would love to do that. Like, just shout a thing it's out. It's kind of where, a great idea. We should add, like, an extra sponsor at the end of every one. Yeah, like, just if you're in the West up. Hollywood area and you need thimbles... Right. Here's this tiny little store that's only open on Sundays. Yeah. And everyone's like, wow, that is not relevant to 99.999% yeah. of your audience. But to the 0.1%? They're going. Love it. All right. Well, I'm going to go make a poop. Okay. Drop it off. Yeah. I'm going to make a nasty diarrhea. Do you have... <laughs> but I'm vegan, so it counts for something. Um, Great. This a nice is it. Nice <laughs> poop with the diarrhea sauce. Yeah. Um, guys, thank you all for watching. Season two is off with a bang. Yeah. <laughs> a bang that sounds like this. Bang, bang. <laughs> but Michael, first of all, 
Thank you so much for coming. My Congratulations pleasure. on all your continued success and hard work. Right back at you. Uh, Congratulations to both of you. Thank you obviously. so much. Thank I'm you. so excited. Yeah, me too. Uncle Michael. Is that what it's going to be Michael. called? Uncle Michael. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to. You can be uncle. You shouldn't. <laughs> but you could. I cut. You are Uncle Michael now. Yeah. Um, Minefield Season 3 is out right effing now. Not on YouTube, Red. That's not a thing. But on YouTube Premium. YouTube Premium. Get yourself ad-free YouTube. Why they change? What is that? What are they doing? Because they're, you know what they're doing? They stopped making red series and they're putting them you know, in front I of the paywall. You know, I gotta tell now. you something. I never liked the name YouTube Red. It sounds like so, porn! So maybe that's what they're doing, finally changing From the, the beginning, name. it was so poorly conceived. <laughs> YouTube Red? <laughs> Here, look, okay, great. So now we're going into the YouTube part of the, top, <laughs> the podcast. This is all, like, this is all, everyone knows what's going on. It's very Dan, public. Dan, you can just tell like, us how much time we have on the outro. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. keep you posted. We can, we can stop. But, but I'm curious what you're going to say. You're right, Ethan. They're putting their original shows in front of the paywall now. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think YouTube is realizing, you know what, what makes us, in my opinion, what makes YouTube different from Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and all that is that it's anyone can be there yeah. and, like, really niche creative people can thrive mm. like yeah. someone who just reviews bathrooms can and get a big following and it's, it's earnest it's beautiful mm. but yeah. netflix would never give them a show but youtube i think they think more of like we have relationships with advertisers mm. we have the biggest global reach the most eyeballs mm. netflix is huge but youtube has more people globally right so they're like let's get advertisers to sponsor original shows Put it in front of the paywall, which right. is awesome because I yeah, want more people to see awesome. it. Absolutely, it's awesome. That YouTube Premium, YouTube Red, allowed me to make a show that I'm really proud of, but I would rather more people see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it couldn't exist without the paywall. Maybe someday but if you some big ass brands. But then you got a brand. Now it's like, what kind of control do they have? Yeah, well, because YouTube was pretty good, except about, for the hot sauce. <clears throat> That we, 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 we crossed that hurdle. It was fine. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't – I want content that's made for the viewer, right. not made at the behest of the billionaire corporation. I hear you. I, what can I say? I am the most perfect person. You are a man of the people. <laughs> I won't lie. This, this is, is me when I'm me a perfect, when perfect I'm human being. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Next week, do we have a guest next week, or are we going balls out? We're going balls we, out next yeah. week. We may have Fousey, too, but I <laughs> don't know if that's um, happening or not. Yeah. Maybe. That might happen. <laughs> to be determined. Nobody's watching anymore. <laughs> yeah. How, how long do people <laughs> watch until they're like, all right. We're at that point. Have I don't know when it is, but we're there. The, I mean, the live viewers number has not changed that much since the beginning. Yeah, we're holding steady. What are we yeah. at? Uh, like 15 11, people 15, oh, 15? <laughs> you should do find a way to like really see if anyone can go the marathon with you like well we went you, for you, eight, we did eight hours you went eight yeah, hours yeah, really. last yeah. but, eight fucking <laughs> hours that's awesome i'd love to just have that, that on brutal. i didn't watch i'm not i don't support you <laughs> yeah of course sure yeah i don't blame you for that <laughs> just yeah. kidding or am i you don't know you won't know well, I don't know if you watched all eight hours. I mean, that'd be insane. I wouldn't be surprised if you flipped it on for a moment, but... Just to check in. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, let's end this. Let's end this. <laughs> before we get to eight hours. All right. So, see you next week. Thanks all for joining. God bless. Get some corn. And get some corn. This raw corn is really something. So yeah. Check cheers. it out. Really sweet. That's a good bite. <laughs> good. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Dan, I'm waiting for you. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Corn out. <laughs>